Have a little listen to his podcast, huh? Dude, it's educational. And besides, I've been wanting to listen to this one. Welcome to Idling in the Impala, a podcast by and for lovers of Supernatural and the fanfiction it inspires. Before we begin, just want to remind you to follow us wherever you listen so you don't miss any episodes or bonus content. If you love what we do and want an easy way to show your support, please consider leaving us a positive, all of the stars, rating on your favourite listing platform. It helps SPN and fanfic lovers find us and share in the fun. I'm Casey. And I'm Drema. I'm Sandra. And here's Casey's recap of what the hell we're doing. We're doing something a little bit different today. So we've grabbed Dreamer because six-ish months ago, we all decided to embark on a decision. Was it six? Together. <laughs> it was March. Okay. So maybe longer than six. I don't know. Okay. Maybe longer than six. Um, but yeah, six months ago, we decided to embark on an endeavor together. And we'll get into whose silly idea that was. <laughs> and that that endeavor is now coming to will have come to a close by the time you're listening to this. So we thought we'd get back together and break it down, have a chat about it, what we did, all the what's, why's, how's, and where's, and how we're never gonna fucking do it again. <laughs> so for Sorry. this episode, you have myself and Sandra as always, and we're joined by the lovely runaway dreamer. Say hi, dreamer. Hi, dreamer. Yes! I was so scared you weren't going to do that. Yes! Yes. You know by now I'm daggy enough to do that. Excellent. Fabulous. Alrighty. So, I mean, if you've, it depends what Sandra titles this, but if you've seen the title of the video, you know what we did. But if you haven't seen the title of the video and you get to things on your phone or computer by blindly clicking, uh, what we did is way back in maybe. February, March time. One of us, but it might not have been me, but one of us saw a Tumblr post for the Wincest Big Bang. And one of us, that one might have been me. <laughs> no, it definitely was. <laughs> we check, we check, the, check the records. It definitely was me. I said yeah. to Dreamer, hey, uh, we can do that. And she went, the fuck we can. And I was like, no, seriously. <laughs> if you do this, I will come along with you. We will do this together. So I, yeah. I, I let the records show that I found the post, but Casey, like, I don't want to say I forced her arm. Mm. I talked us into it. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it, it was me. I did it. I did it. Um, <sighs> yeah. So it, it, me, it me was. And I mean, we we spent we spent most of the last what seven months like. Like I was very, very sort of um, begrudgingly saying, "Look, I know, I know you're like willing to take the blame for this, Casey, but I'm pretty sure it was me that got us into this mess." <laughs> um, but then, you know, like a really simple, you know, search of our chat logs uh, revealed that, oh, actually, <laughs> yeah, I saw, I saw the mess we could get into, but Casey like dug the hole for us, and we we ended up. All three of us somehow. Fuck, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> we we did end up jumping in at Casey's, you know, invitation. So so this is what we're doing. It's going to be a three part series <laughs> where we're each going to break down our Wincest Big Bang story and go through some like ask each other questions. Blah blah. It's like a three way interview, kind of. Mm-hmm. I guess just taking um, turns with it so that we're not yeah. all like it won't be like an eight hour podcast because we're not yeah. mad. <laughs> so. Casey, I think before we get into, yes. we talked a little bit about kind of whose idea it was, how stuff got started. I want to pull it back a little bit to even before the idea came out. And you were doing, I think from hearing me talk about my challenges and my experiences with like the bingos and stuff like that, you had started, um, I think, Jackal's Verse Bingo at that time. And we were kind of like discussing yes. stuff along those lines. And then you were like, ah, Big Bang. So I know we're kind of already saying this, but was this your first Big Bang? It is. Yeah, it is. Um, Kind of feel like that's because I got into the fandom a little bit late. So the ship has sailed on a lot of these things now. Um, You know, I think most authors agree that the fandom is... It's it's getting a little bit smaller, you know, it's it's slowing down. It's not dying by any means, mm. but it is slowing down, certainly. So a lot of the things that I really would have been into have gone by the wayside now. 
Um, so Jackal's verse, I was like, yeah, you know, it's it's not Sam, but I'll uh, <laughs> I'll make it work. It's mm-hmm. fine. Mm-hmm. Um, and then and then here comes Dreamer with this Winces Big Bang, and I was like, fuck it, in for a penny, in for a pound. Let's go for it. Let's go. I'm going to drag my friends along with me. Mm-hmm. That won't backfire at all. <laughs> <laughs> Never. I think Never. too, like when you were talking about you know how it's kind of waned a little bit there we we did miss that sweet spot right of when like i think i mean yeah. i've heard of people doing like there's been 50 or 60 like there's just been a ton of um stories and things that have kind of like come to fruition from a variety of different big bangs uh i think there's even still if i can find it i'll put the link in when we had talked originally about like what bangs were and stuff like there's like a um a spreadsheet somewhere that kind of even talked about like how many stories, you know, different time periods and different bangs there were. And it's just, it's very impressive Mm -hmm. to see Mm. where it was at at its height and then kind of how it's just sort of like waned. But I think what's great about it is that even though maybe the quantity isn't there, I feel like the quality is still there um, of the people that want to keep doing it. So I think that's really, that's really great. So in terms of like drawing you in, I mean, I know it was a combination of like, but like really what in your mind said I want to do a big bang? Like what was it? Yeah, I just Apart I don't know from the insanity. <laughs> no, I didn't I didn't feel like an insane thing at that point in time. It didn't. I was like this No, it didn't thing. back then, did it? <laughs> <laughs> I was like it's fine. I could do a big go to bang at the same time. What? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've learned. We've learned. No, at the t- at the time, it, it didn't it didn't feel insane. And you'd had like, I know I know that your Big Bang experience was a little bit up and down, Sandra. But like when I talked to you about it, and you mm-hmm. you seem to have had like you know really good experience with like the mods and and your artists that came through at the last second for you mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And I was yeah. like, yeah, fuck it. Like I'm I want art. Like mm-hmm. I know who I am. Mm-hmm. I would really fucking love to. You know, just somebody draw art for my fic. We've and talked again, about that before. Oh yeah, we've all said that. Yeah, yeah. How lovely mm-hmm. it would be to have to have art to go with your story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's it, again, it's joining the fandom late and kind of having missed that sweet spot with the the old guard of authors and artists and stuff who are mm-hmm. like friends as well as yeah, you know, like collaborators like that. And now you're kind of like, yeah. oh no, not that we- there aren't still amazing supernatural artists out there, but it's. Just kind of not being in the right place at the right time. The sheer volume to... has yeah. certainly changed. Yeah. Well, yeah. Of people, I mean. We just talked to Monica Woe. And I mean, I think one of the great things I remember her talking about was how Quick River just out of the blue just messaged her and was like, Hey, I, can I can I draw something from your story? And this was like, again, yeah, this was ages mm. ago, but still to have something like that occur is just like mind blowing. You know what I mean? And I just, yeah. I just don't, I, I, mm-hmm. I'm sure it's still, it still happens, but I don't think it happens to that. That was really like, I think new and you know what I mean? Like it had that sort of like, Oh, I really yeah. love to explore where it's like, you know, like you said, us, us kind of coming in towards the sort of the end of it. It, it has, it's, it's had this feel of where it's like evolved into this thing where it, initially it was this like, oh, this exploration of someone's thoughts and ideas. And now it's like, yeah. you know, turned into this, um, this other thing entirely, which, which it's I- sort of settled into what it is now, mm-hmm. as opposed to the sort of the development yeah. that uh, like the beginning and the development stage mm-hmm. and then sort of what it evolved into and has settled into now yeah. over that, you know, nearly 20-year period. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's, it's pretty so amazing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Why the Winchester Big Bang in particular? There isn't a Sam Winchester one. There isn't a Sam Winchester one. Oh, but, you know, mm-hmm. there might be one in the future. So, really, was there that, was that what it was? Future. Was that yeah. what it was, too? It was just like, you know, yeah. okay. It was, like, Dreamer had brought it to me, like, like, she, like, but maybe we'll get into this when when we do her episode. But mm-hmm. she brought it to me like, oh God, look what I found. And like I didn't realize these were still going mm-hmm. kind of thing. And I was kind of like, like I <laughs> I will take full responsibility. I'm Sam. I haul like I hurled my friends into the pit with me a hundred percent. Like, you know, fucking Lucifer riding shotgun in my mind. And I grabbed Adam <laughs> mm-hmm. along for the ride as well. Mm-hmm. But the the way that the way that Dee had brought it to me was like this kind of just like this excitement about finding a, a bang that, that sort of catered to her taste. And right. she was like, look, like this is, I didn't know that they were still going, look at this. 
So I was kind of like, it was kind of like a, you know, like, oh, well, if you want to do it, I'll do it with you kind mm-hmm. of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, because like, oh, like oh, oh, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was a not insignificant amount of panic on Jeeva's end because I don't know if that's what she intended when she brought it to me, but that's where I took us anyway. Gotcha. In, in we go, friends. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, but yeah, it was just like I like I felt that she had like brought this to me as like a oh, this is really cool. But I like I know who who D is as a person, and I know who like who she is as a writer, and I knew that there was no fucking way she was going to do this on her own. So I was like, I'll, I'll do it with you. I don't mm-hmm. mind. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, time makes fools as well. Because that didn't <laughs> seem like such a fucking big venture back in March. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, that was just, it was it was what was around. And yeah, it was just like in the interest of, yeah, no, I'll, I'll help a buddy out. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do that with you. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Just kind of, yeah. Bless. And there isn't a Sam Winchester one. So, so if you like. If only if you, you weren't so kind. <laughs> So oh, I had a blast. Now it's over. <laughs> My question though too is like with Sam Winchester, are you do you think you're gonna try to pull anybody into it if there is a Sam Winchester Big Bang? Oh, there's Maybe. so much silence. So much silence. Just so you know, my fingers that. are in my ears and I'm humming a happy okay. tune. Okay. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I've been through this with the power of you now. Mm-hmm. And I would not on pain of death, I would not ask Dreamer to do one of these with me again because mm. I have been through this process with her. You? Yeah, probably. <laughs> you? <laughs> you? Okay. Stop, dude. Princess. You are okay. You are okay with it. You're like, I've got a fucking deadline. I've got a plan. I've got plots. And, oh, it's fucking done by the first week in August. You're fine with it. <laughs> if your schedule lined up, I would, I, yeah, I probably would ask you to come do a Sam Winchester one with me. Would I kind of prod you a little bit to do a Winchester Sam Winchester one with me? Yeah, maybe. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't die on the hill. But mm-hmm. yeah, no. But if if neither of you wanted to do a Sam Winchester Big Bang with me, I'd probably still do it on my own. But probably. Okay. I'm Social saying, anxiety I'm, is creeping in, going, no, you need I'm, a body. And see, that's that's my thing. Is I, I feel that this. I don't know, just a big bang in particular, the fact that it's collaborative too, but also most of what I've heard, most people that are doing it, they're kind of doing it because there's a buddy, you know, that's doing it with them or in one way or shape Mm -hmm. or form, whether it's the art side of it or it's the writer side of it, or it's like all writers, like they kind of bring them, they they kind of bring people along for the ride, for the torture of like the self-torture that they're putting themselves through. And I think (laughs) that that's a special kind of buddy to do that with. And I think that, I don't know if these are really, like me doing it by myself, was different than doing it with you guys, you know? And I think that, like, I have a first time is one thing, but then I think to do it again, yeah, I I think you kind of need that wallowing in what the hell did we do to ourselves, like, (laughs) situation together. Yeah, there's there's definitely some kind of misery loves company. Yeah. Um, but I think as well, like as as an author, you if you surround yourself with people in the same boat, you kind of hold each other accountable, mm-hmm. like mu- mutual accountability. Like I know if I had not had you guys with me, I I would have dropped out of this thing. I really would. I yeah, mm-hmm. fuck it, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I would have been I would have been done before I got started. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you know that's that's awful because like you know by the time we got to June and and I had an artist and everything, but there's it's a different kind of accountability. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's like, you know, accountability to a collaborator and accountability to your friends are, are different yeah. in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's so much to talk about. When it comes to this story, I'm curious because I believe there was – were there th- thoughts about this story before you actually decided this is what I'm going to use for the Big Bang or how did this – how did this idea or this what if – pop up and i think this is where dreamer might come into play in terms oh, of yeah um oh yes yeah. but what what I'm was my 12 percent credit <laughs> what was it where did the story idea come from and how do you want to like break it break it down for us so i'll i'll start by saying this was not my original story for this bang fic i had a completely different story that i had started writing and i lost like i don't know like two months on it um and that's relevant because the shit's on a deadline so i lost time on it 
Um, and it, it was still a prompt that I got from Dreamer. I was like, give me a prompt. I don't know what to fucking write. I wins this all the time. <laughs> um, but I was writing it and I just, it just wasn't, it wasn't vibing with me. And the, the reason for that was I was writing it with an artist in mind. Mm. So mm-hmm. I was writing it with that in mind that somebody was going to come and make art of this. And I was really struggling with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the end, I was just like, I really don't like this story. Like, I probably will go back to it because it's like, it's a great fucking prompt. Like, it's a, it's a good story. Well, I thought so. Mm-hmm. It's, got, it's got good bones. It's got good bones. It's just, <laughs> I, need, I need to write it for me. Mm-hmm. Not yeah, always. From, like, I don't have an artist point of view. I don't know what they want in a story. So the actual the actual fic that I have now, which is called Sense of Home, Sense with an S C, like sense, like smell, perfume. Because mm-hmm. I've realized when I say it, it also sounds like sense of home. Mm-hmm. So I think yeah. everyone it sounds like that. Yeah, um, but no, this is S C. Uh, no, yes, S C. Sense as in smells. <laughs> sense as in smells, but smells is this is not quite as pretty a word. No. Um, I actually I actually had started writing this in 2023. Okay. Mm-hmm. Again, from a prompt from Dream. I get a lot of my prompts from Dreamer <laughs> oh, now. This Dreamer person she, sounds so good. She's honestly, she's the best. She's my beta as well. She's awesome. Oh, she like wrangles yeah. all my commas and shit, and like <laughs> introduces. When, I'd love to know them. <laughs> <laughs> tells me when I need a hyphen and a semicolon. Real fucking helpful gal. <laughs> love it to bits. Um, but yeah, no that this that was an additional Dreamer prompt that I had. I had put like maybe. I don't think prompt is even the right word. It was, there was it almost was, a commission. Practically, yeah. Yeah. There was not gonna be any money involved, but mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, but it, it was, was it was kinda it was it was me going, I feel like I want to write something, but nothing on my whips list is leaping out to me. You got any ideas? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well it was um, it was firstly it was a prompt with a single line, and then it was it became, all right, what else do you want? Then it and then it was sort of yeah. yeah. Okay. Then it, like, then it became. Okay, this is basically your fig. Tell me what you want. It's like a menu. Yeah, then it, like then here's it became, all the things in the yeah. in in the meal that yeah. you that you want to have. Yep. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Maybe maybe at some point I will um, <laughs> disclose my note stock because that's a fucking <laughs> that's a sight to behold in there. There's like thoughts <laughs> thoughts from dreamer thoughts from me. There's like timelines shit that got scrapped is in there. It's it's a fucking sight to behold for real. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'd I'd started writing this in 2013, and I'd got mm, maybe about ten thousand words into it. <laughs> Twenty three. What did I say? Thirteen. Two thousand thirteen. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a minute. It's been a minute, y'all. No, twenty three. Um, and I just I just kind of lost steam with it, and it just been banished to the whips pile. Mm-hmm. Um, but as I was as I was trying to write this other fic, which didn't even get a name. That should tell you all how not invested I was in it. It didn't have a name. <laughs> I remember I the struggle. I, kept... I remember the struggle with that one. Yeah, you kept just coming yeah, back it to it. Like, I, yeah, it was difficult. Mm. It was difficult. But while I was trying to write that, I kept thinking about this. At the time, the fic was known as uh, Vanilla mm. um, because it had initially been going to be called Vanilla and then a couple of other scents. And it was only going to be like one chapter, and that was what I was going to call it. And then when I started to write it, I was like, oh, no, this is a beast. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> um, but it, the nickname Vanilla had stuck even after the name got changed and just kept coming back into my head and coming back into my head. And I was like, you know, maybe maybe, maybe that's what I want to write for this Big Bang. And that felt like a nice safe bet because that was already over 10K. And I was mm-hmm. like, fucking sweet. I've hit, I've hit the, you know, you've got to have like half of the word count done by like a check-in before your artist. June. Like mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, you've got to have you've got to have like a rough draft. You've got to have over half your word count. You've got to have like, you know, so your artist doesn't join in and then get shafted at the end because you've got nothing. Mm. So I was like, fucking sweet. I'm already over the line. Fucking awesome. So I picked it back up and I spent some time with it and I was like, yeah. All right. It's 10k. How much more can there be? <laughs> 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 the actual fake clocks in at forty three thousand words. Lord, it is not the longest. Well, Junkies the series is longer, mm-hmm. but it is the longest continuous work I've ever written. That's like half a novel, y'all. Yeah, that's yeah. too many. It's words. a novella. I mean, it's it it would classify as a novella easily. So, totally. um, what like so when when you said it. 
you knew it was going to be a beast. What does that mean when you were started working on it? You said it was going to be a beast. It was going to be so, a beast to deal with the, what was in it, or you just knew it was going to be buy. bigger. Okay. All right. It was going to be big. It was mm-hmm. going to, it was going to be big to write. And I didn't, <laughs> didn't at the time know how difficult the actual content of it was going to be right, was going to be to write, but you know, life fucks you like that, I guess. But I knew, mm-hmm. I knew when I started writing it. So the prompt the dreamer had given me, Dean wants Sam to fuck him like a girl, but he doesn't know how to bring it up. So that mm. was that was the initial prompt, and I was like, "Well, that's real Which fucking is vague." To quite some some interpretation, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Which is the point of a prompt? Mm-hmm. But I started I started trying to I started trying to pin D down, and I was like, "I need I need more than this. I need I need specifics, you know." And so I started trying to pin pin her down into what she actually wanted from that, which was fine. And she gave me that and I start I started writing it and it became very very apparent very quickly that this was not just gonna be like a a, a one shot. There was background that needed mm. to happen here. Mm-hmm. And you all know how much I fucking hate plotting and plans <laughs> and background. I'm like, I'll write you a screenshot of porn and then you go away and do what you want with that. This is not my this is not my <laughs> vibe. Like even a little bit. I'm fucking for somebody that so, hates it, you seem to be doing it more and more. I was so thinking I the know. same thing. <laughs> I don't know. Do you think that you write it in everything? Yeah. I mean, do you think that's an effect of the more that you've been writing, or do you think it's an effect yes. of okay, that's what I wanted to hear because yeah. that's what that is. That's just you writing more, and I think that that's 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 a great yeah evolving it's, thing. You never you never stop learning different ways that you will write. No. You know what I mean? And I think that's great. I think that's great that you're doing that. And you are such a good plotter. Yeah, I know it's 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 scary oh, how you. good you plot. I agree. Thank you. Casey doesn't think so, but no, no I do. Agree. They're very I am um, I just I just do bullet points. That's I, I find it really easy to summarize like that. Mm-hmm. And I find yeah, it but really it's easy not to just go and then, the and then and then and then and then and then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. And that's my problem. I really like the bullet points. It's the expanding the bullet points into the fucking story that I don't <laughs> like. That's less of a thing. Really good at planning out essays in school. Really shit at writing essays in school. <laughs> but you don't have to enjoy it to be good at it. <laughs> yeah. That's no, also that's true. true. That's also that true. is also true. <laughs> but yeah, no, it became it became really quickly. So like, my plan was I was gonna like. I was going to open the fic with this this thing that was going to happen like at, at the end, kind of like a like a not like a flashback, but like whatever the fuck, you know, when something <laughs> when something opens with something, and then it you like you then then you go back and you yeah. get all the build up, and then you come back to the, yeah. that was what I was going to do. Yeah, so it yeah. opens, and then I'm doing then I'm doing then I'm doing background, and as I was writing this background, I was like, oh bollocks, right? Um, this is getting in depth, y'all, and I. For the story to make sense, I had to take you back a lot further than I was expecting. So I guess should I like should I like recap the story at this point? Yeah, if you want to. Is that what yeah, supposed to do now? I, I, I've I've got to say though, from the prompt, like I just finished reading, and it's just like I forgot how the story started. So I'm looking at it now, I'm like yes, indeed, you fulfilled mm-hmm. all of that with the prompt, and you did all you did it exceptionally. Because yeah. I was like, oh yeah, that's how it started. Because it's been a while; it's been a while since <laughs> I read the beginning of it. But yeah. yes, what's the how, what is what is the rundown of this of this? Sense so of home? the run the rundown of sense of home is that Dean is gender fluid, which means he um, moves. Be- between um the binary genders of male and female and he does not identify with one more strongly than the other he just sometimes feels more masculine and sometimes feels more feminine mm. and it's it's a very fluid kind of thing and we we see the story the story is completely through sam's pov so i kind of where i wanted it to end up sort of initially mm-hmm. i needed to go back to when they were not quite children but when sam would have been like an early teen Mm-hmm. And kind of show him discovering this and sort of him finally clicking into Dean wasn't like other boys. Mm-hmm. And from there, then it's, it was all about like how Sam, this was never wrong or strange to Sam. Mm-hmm. Sometimes Dean was more masculine. Sometimes he was more feminine. And Sam was just like, yeah, this is just how it is. 
and sort of in that premise, then we go through sort of them as children and I take you up to um, Sam leaving for Stanford. And that's that's the first chapter. And then I bring you back in after Dean picks Sam up from Stanford. So Dean has been with John, who y'all know I'm an enormous fan of. I think <laughs> he's the most excellent parent to ever parent. So faced with a, a queer child or a, a child that um, is gender non-conforming, let's say, I, he would have handled that like a fucking pro, right? He would have nice. uh, wouldn't have been shitty about that at all. Um, so we we saw you sort of come back in and and Sam is. I don't explicitly state that it's Jess. I just there was a fire. Sam was living with someone. He was in a, a relationship with them. He loved them. There was a fire. They died. Mm. Might have been Jess. Might have been a guy. Might have been someone else. Uh, fully open to interpretation. But Sam had lost his life in California much the same way as he did in the show. Mm-hmm. Mm. So he's not really paying that much attention to Dean and he's not really like, oh yeah, no, it's not today. Is it? Um, young Sam coined them soft days and he's, but he's not really paying that much attention to Dean and sort of slowly as the grief, you know, it, it fades as it's want to do um, and it, it becomes less all-encompassing. The, the box grows around the ball. Um, he kind of starts to, to twig into something's not right with Dean, um, what what is happening, and then realising what is missing from Dean, mm. who has become very, very, like, hyper-masculine and very... Performative, you know, like... Mask. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to say gross, but, like, gross. Very mm. performatively, you know, like, l- crass comments and grossness and, and very stereotypical chauvinist almost ick. misogynist um to, and some in an extent yeah yeah to- yeah totally mm-hmm. um but and sam kind of realizing that 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 is what has happened and becoming really angry with it having having an argument with dean like a really big blow up argument and then sam being like oh i left him with john for like four years fuck um, but by the time he's figured that out, he's kind of just smashed everything to smithereens with Dean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so then, then we're then we're with Sam, kind of trying to put it back together mm-hmm. and re- rebuild this trust that he's really smashed with Dean. Because Sam was never, he was never judgy of Dean. He was never, you know, he never made any comments or anything. He was just like, yeah, all right, this is just how it is. So it's a it's a really hard blow for Dean to take. Mm. I will say this is this is a strange thing to say, but I'm so proud of Dean in this story, mm-hmm. which is weird because I'm the author and I wrote him, so that's <laughs> it's a little bit self fulfilling. But anyone who's listened to this podcast has listened to me say so many times. Sometimes I just feel like a scribe. I'm not mm-hmm. writing this story. I'm just writing down what they tell me. That this is their story, and at no point ever did Dean allow himself to be less than he is ever he never shrunk in on himself and tried to hide whether it was sam that was attacking him or anybody else he remained who he was he had Mm. put this mask on for john but he and it it was a mask it was it was defense but he he didn't diminish himself for it does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It's like uncomfortable silence. No, I think that, but I think a lot of that too in the story is because he was, even if there was, you know, some, some pushback with Sam and sub to some extent, I think being with Sam is what gave him that freedom to kind of explore and realize that part of him too and feel I think we get back to safety a lot in our stories. I think there was a safety that yeah. Dean comes to have with Sam in that whatever he's shown, he'll be receptive to that and he'll be accepting of it. So I think that's more apparent. I think I think you make a really good distinction between how he is with John and the effects of that and what that built up, but then how the layers get kind of like allowed to get stripped off 
with Sam. And even if Dean doesn't really realize it or can articulate it enough, he's got somebody like Sam who's looking at it, being very, not clinical, but logical about it. And just like putting mm. those, putting that skill set to work for Dean, I think, in this story. And I think he's kind of like, he 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 helps verbalize how Dean's feeling and give it names and things that Dean wouldn't know. So I think there's that sense of I can be this person and this other person is going to try to help me figure it out situation and loves me for it no matter Mm. what that kind of a situation. Mm. So I think there's that sense of safety that he gets with Sam in this story that makes him, makes you proud of him, you know, um, in how he, I would say develops you know, over over the course of the story, um, he's oh, still sure. he's still very Dean, and there's still all of those. He's so Dean. Moments. <laughs> he's very yeah. He's still still very Dean, but again, you're seeing another you're seeing another side to him that maybe only Sam gets to see. But you're exploring that in the story, which or that Sam Sam's catching. Mm. You know what I mean? In certain ways, yeah. until he's ready to just it's... be out this way himself and yeah. doesn't care. You know, and that takes a lot. And I think he wouldn't he wouldn't have that if it wasn't for Sam through all the struggle because there's there's definitely struggle. In there's there. so much struggle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I guess that sort of relates to m- my silence. There is like like I'm thinking further along in the fic when he when Dean sort of pulls back on the progress he makes mm-hmm. and sort mm-hmm. of shrinks into himself yeah. and you know reverts to um, like defensive hyper mask. Mm-hmm. Um, moments to sort of cover up those those femme traits. Mm-hmm. Um, do you not feel, Casey? Do you not feel that that's like that that's sort of diminishing himself? In, I don't ever in those sorts I, of ways. I don't ever feel that he diminishes himself. I feel like he hides. Yeah, I do. I do feel like he hides, but those. Those moments, and I, I know the ones that you're thinking of. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm very, I'm very specifically thinking of a scene in the first chapter. Um, <laughs> one of the things that is a recurring theme is Dean. Dean has an obsession with lip balm, and he like he, <laughs> he's like he's got like jean uh, pockets for his jeans and pockets for the car <laughs> and pockets for his duffel bag and pockets for his toiletry bag and emergency backup. Just like it's just a fucking lip balm all over the place. Mm-hmm. And when Sam is young, he accuses Dean of. Um, it, it being girly, like as an as an insult, and the the next morning Sam is getting out of the shower um, while Dean's sort of finishing up doing his hair and stuff like that, and Dean kind of like meets his eye in the mirror, and really ostentatiously puts the lip balm on in a very "fuck you" kind of way, and that's the kind of he he hides and he he'll put up a front, but he never stops doing what makes him happy. Right. If that makes sense. I guess I, I'm, I'm thinking of um, like when, and we can we can edit this out if you don't want to get into the spoilery bits. No, um, I'm fine to spoil. It's fine. Like when when John dies, um, and Dean reverts back to the the performative mask stuff, um, hmm. and just pushes down pushes down all the gender fluid traits. The um, stops he like covers his his femme days he you know refuses to quote unquote indulge them anymore um mm. like do you not feel that he diminishes like and when when um what leads up to the um the bathroom scene with the you know the scene I'm talking about yeah I do yeah yeah um that scene so things like that do you not feel that that that's I suppose I suppose I suppose then I I consider what happens after John to um exist in its own space that is mm-hmm. not just pushback from the world that is a very unique set of circumstances insofar right. as l- losing his father and the manner in which John dies I don't know I don't no I I don't I don't I consider that to be that that exists very much in a vacuum for me in the process of this fic. So I guess when I say, when I say that I'm proud of Dean that he doesn't diminish himself, he you know like he does get pushback from Sam and Sam is very cruel 
um, and the the world is cruel to him in various points in the story, and he never he never stops being who he is in the face of that. There there absolutely are moments where he hides. You're a hundred percent right, but I feel like that's a very different set of circumstances to just homophobia in a bar not just homophobia yeah. like it's oh it's nothing but you know i feel like that's different to say homophobia well, I suppose in a bar. What, what i take from what you've just said is that he's never he never lets the world diminish him when he feel when he feels diminished it's always very self diminishing mm. it's internal mm-hmm. yeah 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 that would that would be fair yeah 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 he doesn't let the world tell him who he is yeah yeah it's always it's a and that's that's very very canonical of Dean Winchester is that he's very like he's very like he will hurt himself before he lets the world hurt him. Yes. Like, yeah. You know? Yeah. So that like that's, that's that vibes with what with yeah. what you've written and yeah that makes that makes sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's accurate that he yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean he, to just like call you on the floor and be like, no, nah, fuck <laughs> you. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Just that, excuse me, I know it's your fic and you wrote it, but you are, have you considered that you're wrong? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. no. That, that does make sense, no, I so think I appreciate you explaining that's, it. That's right. Yeah. No, that that is right. And the times that Dean hurts himself in that way exist very specifically. There is a really bright rainbow outside. Well, that's all. Just, you know. Just filling y'all in. What I There's think is rainbow. interesting, too, is like when we get into the characters and we talk about them a little bit more is how... Resilient of a character, I think the boys both are, Mm. particularly Dean, Mm -hmm. his resilience, but yet his self-loathing at the same time. Like he will continue to get back up, back up, back up, but then he always finds reasons, you know, Mm -hmm. rightly so. Some of them are his fault, you know, but he'll Mm. find reasons to blame himself for everything. And I think that that's – I think you do a Mm. good job of that, like, you know – the resilience of him to keep going, to keep trying. And also what I think maybe Canon didn't do is just let them figure themselves out. Um, mm. And I think that that you get to explore that with, with Sam, through yeah. Sam for Dean. I really found that yeah. to be very, it's just such, such a journey. And even though there are setbacks, you know, and he does do a lot, but a lot of what he does that are backslides are trauma responses to different things. I think sometimes a trauma response, you just go back to whatever's the easiest, even if it's not Mm -hmm. the healthiest for you. I think Dean is a very good example of like, you know, when trauma responses are just just to get through the moment. Um, Mm -hmm. They're not, you know, unless you know better tools or tools. And I think you really hit on, on those moments of like, you know, two steps forward, maybe a step back, you know, three steps forward, maybe a couple steps back, mm-hmm. but he's still making progress. And Sam is still there with him. And Sam is, you know, not the sweetest or nicest in any situation either with him, but they're evolving together through the whole journey. I mean, you see it mm-hmm. through Sam too, his acceptance, his understanding, his wants and his needs, and, you know, what it starts out as to what it ends up being, I think is all mm-hmm. very very obvious in the story if we get back oh, pull back a little bit more though what were some mm-hmm. scenes you really wanted to write in this story oh because i always love that because i feel that's, like that's a thing that kind of difficult. it's it's one thing to have a prompt but was there something you really wanted to visualize for yourself and get out on paper there's obviously a lot i wanted i wanted to write out? yeah I wanted to I wanted to write the bathroom scene. I wanted to, I really wanted to write that mm. breakdown. Mm-hmm. Um so I suppose I suppose just kind of cuz it's it's important it's going to keep referencing mm-hmm. it. So um Sam and Dean have a really big blowout fight and Dean kind of like cuts Sam out. And so we spend a bit of time, well I mean we spend all of our time with Sam, but we spend some time with Sam kind of trying to show Dean how sorry he is and rebuild that safe space that they had for Sam put his foot right in the fucking middle of it. Um, so at this point, what had kind of occurred in the story, like story was like briefly, like where were they at? Were they, had they been, they'd been intimate. Things were kind of like going. No, they hadn't. Not, no, okay. they hadn't. This was, okay. this was completely. Be- See mm-hmm. that, that was the thing as well. I'd gone mm-hmm. back so far mm-hmm. with explaining how all this started that then I yeah. had to, I had to catch everybody back up to like 
I right. had to bring them back up to speed before I could get them to be intimate again. Right. Um, so, no, they, they, had, they hadn't been. They had had sex by the bathroom scene, hadn't they? They had, but not not if I go back to where I, where I cut off when mm. they'd had their big argument. Okay. Um, so that was when Sam was still kind of like recovering, uh, recovering from Stanford. And Dean's kind of being a bit Dean and is like, come on, just get back on the horse. Come out, mm-hmm. come have a drink with me. Come, get laid. Like you're fucking moping around. And they have a big argument. And Sam makes reference to Dean's more feminine ways. And Dean just kind of shuts down completely. He's like, okay. you said what you fucking said. I heard it. There's nothing we need. We don't need to talk about it anymore. You've made yourself very fucking clear. And he really like shuts down on Sam. So Sam then spends, you know, like we, we spend time with Sam figuring out like where Sam's at and mm-hmm. understanding. Cause it, it, it's strange really to be writing the story of somebody's like gender journey, but not be with that person. Mm-hmm. Mm, it's quite strange. Yeah. So we spend, of we, <laughs> yeah, we spend time with Sam kind of trying to figure out what the fuck is happening. And with yeah. this is Dean we're talking about, so he's not saying shit. <laughs> by, by the time by the time we get clued in, you realize that Dean knows who he is. He might he mm. do, he doesn't have the right words for it because that's Dean, but he knows yeah. who he is. He knows who he is, he knows what he is and what he isn't, and what makes him happy. We just have to spend time with Sam to get there to learn. Yeah. Pause question. That, yeah. Pause question. Did you feel that that made it a better story? Doing it that way, did it add like some sort of? I think it made. I think it makes it more interesting. Yeah. 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 Okay. I do think it makes it more interesting. Go. Yeah. So they have this big argument, and Sam's like, "Oh shit, this is what's missing. Fuck, I've been such a wanker. God damn it, Dean. I'm so sorry." And Dean's like, mm, "Nope, you said what you said, motherfucker. You said it. Mm, yeah. Live with it. We're all gonna live with it now. Just deal with it." And Sam spends like spends some time rebuilding the trust between them with with you know like in the only way that he could, which is to show and not tell, because Dean wouldn't hear mm. him. Mm-hmm. So he he spends time giving small gifts to Dean that he knows make Dean happy or, or invoke happier memories from their childhood. Yeah, of a time when Sam was utterly and without question accepting of Dean and trying to show him that. I'm still accepting and I fucked up and I, mm-hmm. I'm I'm sorry, please, you know, please don't shut me out. Mm-hmm. And, and please be yourself happening. again. Yeah, a hundred percent. Please mm. you, please come back to me, you know? Mm-hmm. Please be who you are. Please don't because it Dean poor Dean's on a fucking roller coaster. Mm-hmm. He yeah. never he does not diminish himself in in any way, but he he puts on a lot of masks, I will say. Yeah. Um, you know, dependent on what he's dealing with. Um, and we're just kind of just like breaking down some walls with Sam. And as Sam is breaking down these walls, he's kind of forced to confront that actually I've kind of wanted to bang him since we were like teenagers and shit. <laughs> in in, th- in that awkward. But it's not it's- scandalous. <laughs> It's it's not quite as crass as that. It's not quite as crass as that. I'm kind of proud of it. Um, in that Sam realizes that while he loves, has loved, will always love Dean, he's equally in love mm-hmm. with Dean in a romantic sense, which if you've read anything I've written before, it's very fucking different to what I usually write. It's not usually quite that nice. It's usually like, and then they bind. <laughs> <laughs> but we... And then so, they banged. And then they banged. <laughs> but then actually, what happens is, and then they banged. <laughs> Sam breaks, breaks down, breaks down these walls, and Dean gives him, you know, information from a place of trust regarding his sexuality, which mm-hmm. was actually a dream, a dream and request. Which was, I'd like him to be fully gay because you you so often get like by Dean, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. and it's kind of rare. A, a lot of the time in Wincest, you'll get like gay for each other. But like mm-hmm. Dean's past sexual experience has been with women, right? And so uh, D was like, "No, I want him to be fully all the way gay, just all mm-hmm. the way gay." And it, like, it, it's understandable because it's we've got canon where Dean has slept with yeah a multitude of women. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> and that's that's kind of the point of Winchest, isn't it? That it's them, it's what they yeah. have transcends traditional sexuality, sexuality as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
so Dean Dean offers this information to Sam that 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 he's gay and they 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 have a moment. Mm-hmm. And then they get in bed and they don't actually fuck, but they, they get in bed. And it's that's where we go right back to the beginning with the little snippet that I gave you, mm-hmm. which is where Sam kind of twigs into the the femme, the girl part mm. of Dean. And not not so much that he didn't know that Dean had feminine periods of time, but he didn't put all the pieces together until that moment. Mm-hmm. And like, so that in theory was where I was leading in, in 23. And I was like, and we're going to leave them here. And then, then we're going to go forward from there. And, and Dean's going to be like, I want you to treat me like I'm a girl. Fuck me. Like you would fuck a girl, blah, blah, blah. And then that just didn't fucking happen. Okay. Not happen. <laughs> right. But they, they, co- they come together. Best laid plans and all that. Yeah. Best laid plans. And they come together and they have this night and then they spend about three days in bed fucking. <laughs> and then they're back on the road. And John dies. How fucking rude of him. Just so rude. Absolute cock block John Winchester. <laughs> How could you? Yeah, but it it re- I'm so fucking proud of that. I'm really fucking proud of that scene. So Sam and Dean Wait, go John to Bobby's. Dies? Yeah, me too. <laughs> John Winchester being Sorry. my favorite thing. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> no, it's just it's just a really emotive moment where nobody yeah. has a cock out. Do you know how rare that is for me to write? <laughs> It's not actually that rare, but yes, I get what you're saying. <laughs> Shut up! You're ruining my you're ruining my reputation as porn <laughs> self deprecation. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. also that, also that. But yeah, they they um. go they go to Bobby's and Dean like all the progress Sam had made with Dean just mm-hmm. completely backslides, and Dean yeah. just shuts down, shuts him out completely, and they're not they're not intimate or anything. And Sam's just like, oh fuck, I don't know what to do with this bollocks. And is it basically the ghost of John? Like you know, he wouldn't he would think. Like what? What was what was Dean's? So like- we we get we get a glimpse into into Dean's head in that mm-hmm. he's it, in this in this is this is the the bit where where Dean was like I feel like he diminishes himself and it mm-hmm. in this vacuum of space he absolutely does you know like mm-hmm. he throws away all his lip balms mm-hmm. and he he puts on that performative masculine yeah. thing and really like without the kind of going out and fucking the people and making lewd comments but he really yeah um and when we when we sort of we we get a glimpse into Dean's head. He he's just trying to be who he thinks John mm-hmm. wants him to be. He's trying mm-hmm. to be, as he puts mm-hmm. it, I'm just trying to be a good son. Yeah. He knows that John didn't want him to be the way that he is, mm-hmm. which is why he put on the mask after Sam left for Stanford. He knows that John would not did not approve of who he was. And so the only thing he can think to do in his grief is to be the son he should have mm-hmm. been in his mind and mm. sam is distraught by this and doesn't know really what to what to do with that and then dean just completely just breaks completely mm. comes comes back to sam for intimacy which is so like pulling back the veil as an author i know what was going on in dean's head but mm-hmm. the reader doesn't necessarily but yeah. dean comes mm. to sam in, in in the middle of the night in dean's head he's asking sam does sam still want this intimate relationship with him and when Sam answers, Sam is saying, I want you. Mm. But Sam doesn't know that that's not the question Dean's asking, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when we when we get to the next day, which is the bathroom scene and the breakdown, and Sam comes home to find Dean, like, in, like, she, you know, heels, shaved legs, denim skirt, you know, like, um, I don't really know. Like, it's like a halter neck top. The dichotomy being performatively feminine massively performatively feminine and sam mm. actually walks into him applying makeup in the mirror and crying mm-hmm. and sam's like what <laughs> and dean's like you said you wanted this and sam's like no i said i wanted you i didn't say i wanted fucking yeah. this um and they kind of they kind of they, they go back and forth and dean's like look i don't i can't be who john wanted me to be and it's easier for you if i'm a girl so i'll just be a girl and sam's like but but no. And Dean's like, fucking what? <laughs> I, well, I spent long enough like pushing down the parts of me that were fair. I could push down the parts of me that are masculine and just present as a girl full time. And Sam's like, the fuck you will. It's also worth noting that they'd had a conversation about whether Dean was a trans woman, mm-hmm. which is when we find out that Dean knows exactly who he is. And Dean's like, no, I just, mm-hmm. sometimes I feel masculine and sometimes I feel feminine. And it's mm-hmm. not fucking simple. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we have this really, and th- this was a scene that I don't think I'd s- 
I didn't envision this scene when I started writing the fic in 2023. Mm -hmm. But by the time I'd sort of started putting bones together for the bang, this was the scene I wanted to write where we have, Mm. you know, like Dean in makeup and and feminine clothes um, and they're going to have real Mm -hmm. angry sex. Mm -hmm. Wasn't necessarily going to be in a bathroom, but they were going to have really angry sex about it. It was Mm going to be a whole thing. And then as as it turned out when I was writing that scene, that what it was, um, was Dean was going to find his inner, like, fucking hard top mm. in this moment. And oh, he was yeah. going to fuck Sam, um, but still make up. And Sam, like, cuts his clothes off. But he's mm-hmm. still wearing heels, because um, apparently both of them are into that. They don't talk about it, but, like... <laughs> They're both into it. Apparently the rest of us are too. <laughs> yeah, apparently the rest of us are too. <laughs> but it's so it's it starts it starts off as this kind of like angry scene and then the the getting ready to fuck and Sam's like, wait, no, wash your face. If this is it, this is us, this is us. And it's really fucking sweet. Mm. It's it really it's nice. Beautiful. I'm really proud of it. Mm. It's really nice. It's and then- hot as freaking so like good. volcano lava. Friggin' right so down in the middle of it. But <laughs> yeah. um yeah, it's so it's, beautiful. It's emotive. Just, yeah. Emotive it's as well. Emotive. But Dean, you know, like he washes his face and he he keys back into his inner top and absolutely <laughs> rides Sam hard and puts him away wet. If oh, you will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's really fucking good. And then that's kind of like the culmination of the breakdown where we we have Dean just quietly cry. He cries a lot in this fic. Mm, um so if you're much. not into Dean crying. I, I don't know what to tell you. Blame her. This fic's going to drive you crazy if you don't like Dean crying. Like it's not performative, it's excessive, though, but it's yeah. deliberately excessive. So yeah, you know, but it's not. Too bad, so it's sad. not performative. <laughs> it's not. It's not performative. No, it's, it's just not, part of who Dean is. Yeah, it's very. I don't put them in situations that are deliberately engineered to make Dean ostentatiously cry. Right. It is just, and some it's of the situations come reaction. from. He is a man who lives under considerable stress at all times of his life. And, you know, mm. when he allows himself to feel his feelings, sometimes that comes out in frustrated tears. We've all mm. been there. Yeah. We've all been there, yeah. but like, this is fine, this is fine, this is fine, this is fine. You drop your coffee and you start crying. We've all yeah. been there. Yeah. And on his, his femme days are those days when he's he can let himself fucking cry because he spilled some coffee. Like, that's just yeah. that's just what... That's just the where, where is he's at. In that, yeah. yeah, in that format. Yeah. Yeah. And so obviously things don't get fixed mm-hmm. after the bathroom scene, but they come they come back together. And now it's them against the problem instead of them against each other. Mm-hmm. Um and then Which is always better for the Winchesters. <laughs> oh yeah, hundred percent. Oh, I think that's when the story does 100%. start to take a like, like you said, uh, it's it's not us against each other; it's us against the world kind of a situation. Mm. So I think that there's there's yeah. a definite mm-hmm. shift in the story at some point where um, I think it's actually the part where I started reading when I had to catch up after like I'd read up to a certain point, but then yeah. it's this, you know, Sam being like, you know, how hostile and um, just aggressive and horrible you know certain segments of the population are mm. towards the yeah. the relationship that they have and then this sort of like search for a safe space for the both of them instead of just being yeah. there for yeah. each other which i thought was really well, also, great yeah also casey was this the point where you pretty much hacked off ten thousand yeah. words because yeah, yeah so yeah. W- can you tell us about that so what I what I found after the bathroom scene, so I'd you know I'd I'd done that flash forward, taken us back and brought us back up to speed, as it were, mm-hmm. and then I'd taken us forward through um, through John and through all that and through this bathroom scene, and then in my head I had this this finale sex scene that was going to be really catered to the prompts and you know there's going to be all kinds of stuff in it. But I needed to I needed to get them there. So I started <laughs> writing them there. But it just it didn't I felt like I was just writing towards a sex scene, but I'd already written towards a sex scene twice. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Because mm-hmm. I'd already I'd already written towards this this first intimate uh, intimate moment between them. 
And then I'd written to this this breakdown and and we see more sides of Dean. And then I was like, I'm, I'm writing towards another sex scene. This does not feel satisfying. Mm. Um, so I was right. I was writing like the kind of like how that progresses. Like Dean goes from not wanting to be intimate on on feminine days and Sam being like, but why? That first day was what? What is happening? Yeah. And that kind of like that relationship developing and then realizing that I, I wasn't happy with just building towards a sex scene again. And I, I said to Dee, I was like, I think it's I think it's done. I think the bathroom was the 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 end. And she was like, that's not the end of the story. And I was like, no, I agree it isn't, but I don't know where the fucking end is now. Mm-hmm, I yeah. think it needs to stop here. And we kind of we kind of went back and forth. And I had had I had had in my head some ideas that had you know had kind of gone by the wayside and I was like well what if I what if I give them somewhere to settle down instead what if instead of just building towards a sex scene on the road and I like it had been stuff that had kind of just you know been idle thoughts that hadn't really developed into anything and I was like well what if what if that's what I'm building towards what if now this final the climax of the story is them finding a place to call home Mm. um so after the bathroom breakdown there's like a you know a kind of passage of time and it's just a little a little bit a little bit of fluff and a little bit of filler and a little bit of just slice of life stuff and then there is the next event which is a bar in florida and i'm gonna Mm -hmm. actually i'm gonna go on record here as saying i am really sorry to everyone who lives in florida (laughs) and more specifically everyone who lives in jacksonville florida because I'm really not fucking Who nice. Isn't a homophobe. <laughs> I'm really not nice about Jacksonville and Florida, but Jacksonville specifically. And I just want to say, I am a hundred percent sure that ninety eight percent of you are lovely fucking people, right? <laughs> but the fact is, I googled a lot of shit, and Jacksonville ranks like third in the top ten worst places to live if you are part of the LGBTQ plus community. So I will I will say here, and I do it. It is in the author's notes for the figures. Well, like I'm really sorry. I'm not making a sweeping generalization about Florida, but I googled some shit, and this is what Google said. And I needed it was important for the story that I needed to send them south somewhere warm. Mm-hmm. So they have this they have this interaction in this bar um, that is exceptionally homophobic, mm-hmm. and um, so it's like trigger warning. The F slur is used twice, once by an NPC and, and once by Sam, and I hate it. And when I was writing mm. it, I like I had to like black out the words. So mm, when I went back yeah. and read it, I didn't have to read them. I hate it. But it was, you know, that's how serious this this thing was. And after that, Dean kind of Dean Dean powers on, you know, Dean refuses to be diminished. And I think that goes back to what you said, Sandra, that they have created this space now. Mm-hmm. Dean knows he's safe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he does not have to sure. hide. Yeah, and it's it's a it's a real moment, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But Sam's Sam's thinking constantly about finding somewhere to settle down, and mm-hmm. he can't keep living this life. He can't keep, you know, having to take a gun to every fucking bar that they go to just in case, and mm. it's it's exhausting to him. They've mm-hmm. been on the road for about five years at this point. It's, it spans a long time. This fic, mm-hmm. so. I know what I'm building towards. I'm building towards giving them a place to live. So mm-hmm. then I'm with Dreamer again. We're Googling best places to live if you're part of the <laughs> LGBTQ plus community. Mm-hmm. And they're all on the West Coast because it's nice out there. Yeah. But I didn't want to send them there. I didn't want to send them there. And then what should come up? Poughkeepsie, New York. Mm. Oh, <laughs> shit. That's a callback. I have spent so long on property signs. <laughs> and if, 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 that, if that went over your head just then... Remember, that's their safe word yeah, in the show. Yeah, that's so great. Yeah. That's, that's so great. Drop everything and get that's out. That's their safe word. So yeah. that's their safe place. Isn't yeah. that beautiful? That is. Oh, that's so genius. I cute. love it. I feel I felt really Good clever when yeah. I found that. Yeah. I yeah. felt really clever. No, love that's it. really um, sweet. So, yeah, I need to... I need to get them there. What am I going to do? Well, shit, looks like i got to write a case again. Apparently, <laughs> this is what I fucking do now, because I just wrote a case in Junkies as well. This is what I, <laughs> this is what I do now. I write cases. So, you write good a, cases. Thank you. Good case, thank case. You. <laughs> Thanks. I'm awesome. <laughs> I have a cute little montage that I actually had to run by Sandra, because I was like, 
I'm not American, please. This is <laughs> genuinely really offensive. <laughs> About the them traveling and the passage of seasons. And I'm super fucking proud of it. It's really it's pretty. So pretty. It's so pretty. Really, it is. Yeah. It's a very I'm pretty really, really, really proud of it. It's a pretty seg it's it's a pretty segue. It's just it's a beautiful passage of time. It mm. it hits it hits so many things. It's very Americana. I mean, you're like, this is yeah. too general. I'm like, yeah, but I mean, this is what Americans think of these places. So I mean, you're like, you're general. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not outside of the realm of like, you know, yep. yeah, the West Coast, Seattle. Yeah, rains. It's rainy there. <laughs> it's one of those things. Yeah. So Midwest, there's nothing there. Yeah. Again, yeah. I'm really sorry to everyone that lives in the Midwest, but unfortunately, um, look outside. There's nothing there, guys. <laughs> It's like fucking corn. That's a prairie. That's a prairie. That's, that's a corn. Yeah. That's what they do. Now yeah. an apology for the apology that turned into another insult. <laughs> But there's, but again, there's generalizations that I think are just you just you course, hear them they're, they're and you know. For a reason. Yeah, and they they yeah. kind of just it kind of just sings to what you were doing, especially like the traveling and everything. It was just it was really good. It was very very good. Yeah, I love your travel montages, Casey. Mm-hmm. Oh, you created you. those. Thank you. I wrote I wrote another one for junkies where I have mm-hmm. Dean going up and down the West Coast mm-hmm. at the East Coast. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm really proud of that. Apparently, I'm really mm-hmm. fucking good about writing traveling across America. <laughs> Even though yeah. I've never fucking, no, but I've legitimately, been. like you, you. If I didn't know you weren't Nate, like if you weren't a local American, like it wouldn't, mm-hmm. like it wouldn't, it wouldn't twig me that you weren't. Plus, well, I feel like you do that really natural. well anyway. I think it was in your cottage verse or whatever that you like do like um. <sighs> A vacation sort of a thing, like a travel thing mm-hmm. with Sam. Mm-hmm. I really yeah. enjoyed that yeah. too. I mean, yeah. you do you you do that really well. You know, you you mm-hmm. you hit points that make it because there's always some people just don't do transitions all that great. And I think you find a you find that sweet spot of like there's time to really detail and invest in a scene, but then there's a For sure. you have to find a great way to just make time move and not just be and now they're here like you know like you know you have to have some yes. ex- explanation to it and you do that you do that in a way that's lovely to read and it's you For know sure. so yeah. so that's yeah that's definitely one of your strong points but one of your strong points of many well, thank you thank you thank you i appreciate it so i send them i send them from uh yeah like seattle washington um and like Oregon and up that way, all the way across to the East Coast. Um, because I don't know if y'all know this, but New York is is on the East Coast. Um, like I've, <laughs> I've triple checked the maps. I'm I'm really fucking sure about that. New York is very it's big. Across yes. it takes it takes it takes the better part of a year. And then then they're in New York. And I can't just give them a house. That would be that would be far too sensible and reasonable. And that's not what we're about here. So then I have a case. Oh, it's a um it's it's just a house flipper. He's bought a house. Um, he's ended up having to rip it back to like the fucking roof and the studs, and now his contractors are dying. Well, shit. Um, so no. Sam and Dean, Sam and Dean to the rescue. Um, and the reason the reason for that is, I was like, I can't. How am I going to give Sam and Dean a house? They don't have like mm. credit scores. Um, so I was like, well, what if you know, <laughs> what if they rescue somebody from a ghost and the guy is lamenting that he's never going to be able to sell this place and they're like well we'll rent it for a discount and mm-hmm. yeah. ghostbuster services mm-hmm. which is exactly <laughs> what happens um and i'm i really i like autumn i like the way that autumn feels mm-hmm. and i like the the weather and the air and everything like that and you know leaf peepers which is the official name for them i googled it leaf peeping <laughs> Is a thing. People go so to funny. that part of the East Coast, like a lot of the a lot of the East Coast and stuff. There's maps and stuff on Google. I looked on Wikipedia. Sorry, I looked extensively. There was a period of time when I had like I shit you not like about ten tabs that were related to do like <laughs> leaves, trees, nature. I've googled what kind of fucking trees go in New York State. People, <laughs> mm-hmm. I put some work into this. I put oh, my yeah. ass into this for real mm-hmm. because. Like earlier on, we talked about Sam when he was thinking about places they could settle down. He likes the East Coast because I like the East Coast because Sandra lives on the East Coast. <laughs> Fucking <No>. sue me. <laughs> so I guess I'm get glad to, you didn't put, put them in Delaware, in though. They didn't, they didn't need to deal with that. So that's good. I'm glad you found <laughs> After everything they've been through. Oh. Yeah, not Delaware, too. <laughs> not man. Delaware. Fucking hell. Ooh. 
but then I I get to, I get to put them in this place, and I you we get to kind of fall in love with it with mm-hmm. Sam, and it's it's in the right part of it's in the right part of October, and the leaves are turning, and the air is cool and crisp, and it's just maybe starting to become frosty, and it's just it's everything I love about autumn, fall, everything, and the deal with the case. Um, which it involves a creepy doll head, and I'm really fucking pleased with that. I don't think <laughs> I thought of the doll head. I think you thought of the doll head, D. Oh well, it's your story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a, a, a great Aunt Mildred, um, <laughs> kooky bitch, real kooky. Got some real <laughs> fucking strong opinions about land ownership. <laughs> let me tell you, friends. Um, but yeah, they, they, um, it's uh, it's one of those rare cases where they think they've got it they leave someone else dies mm-hmm. and like oh we cocked mm-hmm. it up whoops yeah and they go back and they figure it out <laughs> um so if you ever wanted sam and dean like digging up around tree roots at like 3 a.m i got you fam yeah. I got you covered. that's, that's got to be a rare a rare, rare cake. Cake. <laughs> <laughs> it just it's a section well like but they're I very like dirty, Sam and Dean dig sweaty, Leave me alone. Lots of dirt. They lots might of sweat. be. <laughs> You'll yeah. have to read to find out. Yeah. <laughs> they might be. They might You'll be. You'll have to read to find out. And then we get back to my point, which is the guy thanking them for dealing with it and, and lamenting that, um, you know, what is he going to do now? Because his name is Mud. Nobody is going to come back and work on this place. And it's been stripped back mm. to... Um, now... You can't actually find this listing because the house has been sold, but I did go and find a house for sale. Oh, that's so cute in Poughkeepsie, New York. Mm-hmm. That was like you know fucking four walls and a roof, mm-hmm. and it had been stripped back to like it hadn't been stripped back to the sheetrock because it was like a wood frame house, but it had been completely stripped back. And I based everything around mm. this place, like the, the sort of the and shape of property, the land, yeah. And the property and what was around it and and things like that. So, you know, it was it was a real put. It's it's, a, it's based on a real place that has now been sold. And nobody fucking told me when houses get sold, the estate agents take all the fucking pictures down and you can't find so them really. anymore. They don't. I, I really always. wish I'd known that. I would have fucking saved them. They don't like they did always, for this one. but Whoever sometimes they do. This yeah, one they'll take it down. Some some yeah. people do, but some people don't. Whoever yeah. was listing this one. That's yeah. shitty. Whoever was listening to that. that one. Yeah, you definitely have to always say yeah, if you're well, going to use them for reference. Yeah. <laughs> it does. It makes it does make sense. I wouldn't want pictures no. of the inside of my house going up no. after I bought it. But I still like, have, I still author, have, I, was like, oh, I still have it up for my, from the house that we bought because it's so different anyway inside. I kind of just feel like, eh, you know, like at this yeah. point, like it just, it's, it's almost just a, a snapshot of what it did look like, you know, as opposed to what it's what it's like now. So I haven't I haven't removed it yet, but maybe some point when I get famous, I'll have to remove it. But right now, I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> you know, dogs don't get dogs. Some people turn yeah. up at your house. Yeah, yeah. So this guy, the 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 house flipper, whose name is Graham, because apparently mm-hmm. I name NPCs now as well. Fucking hell, <laughs> his name is Graham, but they call him Davies, mm-hmm. or rather, I as the narrator call him Davies. <laughs> <laughs> He's lamenting, like, you know, his reputation is ruined. And, you know, for good reason, like, five people died. I'm, I'm, mm. I'm sorry, Graham, but the, the facts is the facts here, friend. It's um, true. N- nobody's going to come and work on this. It, you know, he's not going to be able to... He even tried to, like, sell it on just as it was to somebody else, thinking it just shouldn't be in his hands, and a poor estate agent girl got murdered. You know, it's like a real thing, and he's like, nobody's going to buy it. And Sam goes, we will! And Dean's like, what the fuck are you doing? What? <laughs> The fuck we will. What are you talking about? But they have this really, this really sweet moment of Sam being like, you know, we can't save people if we get stabbed by some fucking homophobes in a bar somewhere. And also, I want somewhere where we can be us, mm-hmm. where we yeah. can be safe. And it's really fucking cute. It's so sweet. Mm-hmm. So I fudge a lot of numbers, and I don't don't look too closely at that because it's very shaky. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, uh, sign the keys. Uh, sign on the dotted line. It's theirs. They're going to pay rent to this guy. It's like a, a lease to own situation. And then, like, they're going to pay it, pay it off, and they'll be theirs in like a few years. And then we spend their first day when the property is theirs. Um, but it's a shell, so they have to go and get like supplies, and it's it's really it's this sort of close, comfortable domestic 
mm-hmm. but like, like not really domestic because it's it's a it's a shack, mm-hmm. but it's kind, kind of like, like domestic camping, kind of like yeah, kind of like you know when you'd make a little fort under under a bunch of chairs yeah. in your lounge room like or something when you're fort. a kid, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And you'd have yeah. a little lamp and mm-hmm. just like sheets spread out and cushions and yeah. yeah. Cute. Mm-hmm. That's so, what it reminded me of anyway. Yeah, that's that's kind of the vibe that I was going that yeah, it's gonna suck. And yeah, they don't have heat and they don't have power, but it doesn't matter because it's theirs mm-hmm. and they've got each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's that's what matters. So I suppose at this point we have to we have to bring in the scent, the smells, the mm-hmm. scents of home. Mm-hmm. So each chapter has a scent. And it is to do with where Dean is at a given moment. So chapter one is like baked goods. I'm not going to disclose the um, sense you will have to read to find out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of like kind of like walking past a bakery. Chapter two is hard, aggressive, masculine sense. Chapter three is no sense, but it's a choice. It's a deliberate decision to be neutral. Chapter four is external sense. So not something you would wear as a fragrance. It is, I suppose it's it's more, more the sense that Sam associates with certain things. What are the things that stick out in his mind? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, chapter five is no sense, but it is not by choice. It mm-hmm. is not a choice to be neutral. It is a reaction. Very feminine sense for Dean's breakdown scene. Um, and then we start kind of melding them together as Dean accepts the two different parts of himself and realizes that he can be all at once. It is not, he does not have to divide himself mm-hmm. yeah. in that way. And then we're coming to the end. So we we kind of like pull back out for the case fic and what what is associated with assault and burn of a spirit and then we come right back in to sam's scent of home what does the first night in this place smell like Mm -hmm. so it smells like propane because of the heater it smells like falling rain and it smells like a pumpkin because it's nearly halloween and i wanted it to be p-words and that's love it that's they have they have, it's not the scene that I had pictured, but they have the scene with a, a femme dean mm-hmm. and his his request to be treated like like a girl. And then yeah. that's where I leave you. And what mm-hmm. happens after that is entirely up to you. What do they mm-hmm. do with the house? It's up to you. How do they live? Are they happy? Of course they're happy because it's a fucking happily ever after fic. But that <laughs> yeah, is, that's that not is a where choice. I leave you. They're happy. <laughs> They're happy. They're very, very happy. But I leave it. I leave mm. it up to your. I leave it up to your imagination. What What do they do with the house? What do they do with the land? How do they put down roots in this place? Do mm-hmm. they Do they go and get real people jobs and hunt on the weekends? Do they gradually phase out hunting? Do they stay hunting and hustle their way around the country and do like a week on and a week off? It's entirely mm-hmm. up to you. But all of the things that Sam associates with home through his life from a young teen to he's in like his late 20s by the time we leave Mm -hmm. and it all comes down to this whenever he thinks of home whenever anyone asks him about home it will be these things that he thinks of Mm -hmm. and that's the end oh it's very lovely such a beautiful story i love it lovely thank you very lovely i'm curious before because i know dreamers got some questions too when you when you'd done the prompt and it was titled Vanilla, did you immediately get a sense of when you started working on it with for the bang that it was going to become focused around sense in general? Did you already have that idea or hmm. when did that kind of come into I think play? It, I think it had already I think it had already been renamed to Sense of Home by okay. that point. Okay. I Can think I, I think uh, that uh, I, rem- I remember yeah. why it was called you, Vanilla, you do you? Yeah, it was the it was gonna be like just um, masculine and a feminine sense, and that was gonna be the title of it. So one of them was gonna be vanilla, and there were a couple of others, but just got shortened to vanilla. Can't mm-hmm. remember what the sense was off the top of my head. I think it was actually wasn't it something to do with the lip balm? Yeah, it might have been. Yeah, 
Vanilla lip balm makes an appearance a few times in the fic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it was a little... Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but no, I, by the, it, by the time... It... I didn't think it was going to be as big uh-huh. as it ended up being. Right. I thought, sweet. I'm like, I've already... I've crossed I've crossed the finish line. I've already... I've got my word count, <laughs> you know. Maybe, maybe another 10,000 and it'll be fucking sweet. And then mm-hmm. that wasn't how it worked out. So it definitely no, wasn't fine. the story that you envisioned when you first started? No. Okay. No. Okay. Absolutely not. <laughs> no. Yeah, I, think, I think that's safe it's to like, say. Um, yeah, it's certainly... They, they so rarely are, though. They mm-hmm. so rarely are. I, I mean what I say when I'm... I'm the scribe a lot of times. Mm. I don't i find it very difficult to control a story like that i'm kind of just like well this is what wants to be said Mm -hmm. you know i don't i find it quite difficult to be rigid and be like this is the story i'm going to tell because maybe that's not the story that wants to be told Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i just remember i remember all the times while you were writing that the timeline got scrapped or rewritten or and like yeah Yeah. and your notes at the bottom at the bottom of the dock, like got reordered or <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just it was like there's it was practically a whole different well, I mean, not a whole different story, but just just the the bones just the of evolutions that. that it went through is just yeah. insane. Yeah. Yeah. It was a real the bones process. are the same. But it's definitely um, it's a very different animal than well, what talk- it was. And look so much of so much of the story that was in those notes and timelines and stuff is still part of the story. It's just not in this written in this written mm. fic. Like yeah. you've put them aside, maybe to write one day, mm. but maybe not. Um yeah. but they're still, you know, they're still headcanon. They're still part of the story, you know, in your heart. <laughs> If you want to be cheesy, yeah, about it. I would. I um, would like. I would like I just to didn't go make back it into the story. Yeah, I would like to go back for sure. And because there was, there's a pretty big time skip mm. with the part that I had. I genuinely, it was like ten thousand words the that I cut part. and the time yeah. that I lost. Mm-hmm. But it just wasn't. Now I could go back and and slot it in, and it would make perfect sense. But at the time, it wasn't building properly. So did you yeah. feel like it had to do with the pacing of the story in your mind? Is that one of the reasons you major for the cutting? It, it wasn't the pacing. It was. The, it felt directionless. Mm. It felt like it didn't. Yeah. I felt like I was just Very wandering rudderless. around mm. writing porn. Gotcha. For no reason. And mm. look, I'm not. I'm not about. I'm not against that. Right. I'm really <laughs> not against writing senseless porn. But the thing is, I had put so much work into the, the the bones and the structure of this story. It felt a disservice to let it trail off like that. Mm. It needed an end. It felt like a momentum. It needed a, a, maybe. a plot yeah. anchor, yeah. yeah, rather than rather than a sex scene anchor. Which you know, given the story, um, is very much about him, uh, Dean accepting himself, which sex is a huge part of that like mm. for this dean would have still made sense but like like i was saying with your fix sandra to do the story it, like to do the fic itself justice it did need something more than a sex scene to mm-hmm. anchor it and to like to yeah to just cap it you know yeah. mm-hmm. to to say this is this is where they ended and to leave everyone satisfied with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 At least that's how I that's no. how I that's how I viewed it. Yeah. No, I get that. There's like, there's certainly... like I get how I get why Casey felt the way they felt mm-hmm. about, you know, rejigging that whole thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. There's certainly there are certainly plenty of fix that like I'm a fucking champion of writing them where you can go and then they went to sleep. And that's the end. That's nice. <laughs> You can, you can, yeah. you know, the climax of the thing, haha, pun intended, is that scene <laughs> the where they come together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is mm-hmm. the climax. Yeah. But this was not in the same way that, and I, it's inevitable for me to compare it to Junkies because it's the only thing I've written that's anywhere like c- comparable in length and story. Mm-hmm. Is yeah. that 
you know, the first few episode, episodes, the first few installments of Junkies, you could go, uh, and then everybody came, and that's it. But <laughs> even even right at the start, Junkies was saying, this is not the end. This is not, mm. there's more to this. Even right from Blood Junkie, the start, where it all went fucking wrong, it was supposed to be porn, damn it! <laughs> even there, Dean was saying, this is, there's more, this is not where it ends. Mm-hmm. And I had put, I put my soul into this and I know Dream has got questions that, that we'll get to. Mm-hmm. It's very fucking personal as mm-hmm. well. Yeah. yeah. It deserved better than mm-hmm. just kind of meandering it. It needed a, a stronger anchor. Yeah. And a stronger, yeah. it needed an ending. And what I was working towards didn't feel like an ending. Yeah. 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 So I ha- I, st- I didn't delete anything. I still have a few that I cut and you know, Maybe when I can stand to fucking look at these two again, um, because I am the absolute definition of it's finished when I fucking hate it. <laughs> I I fully intend to go back and I fully intend to fill in those gaps and really give the reader and also dreamer that original prompt of that original scene. Hmm. You know? Well, I love it, it though, because I think you can head. have your own verse. Like, just like you have a junkies verse, you know, I think this can be yeah. something that, yeah. you know, you can always go back to and you can peek in, you know, if you want and you can write a little yeah. something. It doesn't have to be. If you know, you're this, in the mood for it, drop yeah. a little timestamp. Like, yeah. I'm I love appreciating verses, verses yeah. more and more now because of mm. that idea, you know, as for to sure. what they're able to do. So I think that's great. It's it it is nice to just go. It's something I really enjoy doing with um my cottage verse. It's just and that's why I had I had the fake dating Sam Winchester, which was just little chapters of just little silly ideas. And you know, some of them just a couple of hundred words and some of them are, you know, longer and just little bits. And you can go, I thought about this and that adds mm-hmm. and I, I, I really do enjoy that and I haven't yeah. I haven't really written anything like that because Junkies does not lend itself to that. Junkies is <laughs> strap in, mm. get a puke bag, uh, <laughs> call your friends and tell them you'll be out of commission for the weekend. It's um, just a lot. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to some dark places, you know, yeah. but it doesn't lend to a more like, not now anyway. Mm. Hopefully it will yeah. one day, but for now we're still in the meat of the story. But no, yes. it absolutely was not the story I envisaged when I started writing it in 2013. It was not the story I envisioned when I picked it back up for the bang. <laughs> not even close. Not even close. But are you happy with it? Uh, with the story that came out? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Endlessly. Good. Very, good. very happy with it. I'm That's lovely. Very, oh, I'm so very glad. proud of it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm I very proud. Be, for sure. I'm, I'm proud and I'm pleased that I wrote something that doesn't descend into horror in the same way that junkies <laughs> does it's hard yeah. and there's bits of it that you want to grab one or both of them and go fucking seriously get it mm, together yeah mm-hmm. for sure but it, it's it's where junkies is sam against dean and they haven't got to sam and dean against the problem this was kind of always sam and dean against the problem there was just a couple yeah. of moments Well, there's a growth together, right? Like there's that growth together you experience Mm -hmm. in this story where I think junkies, you're already like putting a lot of things in their way that they've got to overcome, you know, like that. Yeah. It's it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot Mm -hmm. in there. And this is still a lot, but it's a different, a lot. (laughs) It's also, it's also real interpersonal trauma. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas this is, this is, um, this is trauma that. Sam can help Dean mm-hmm. overcome. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. not this is trauma not... that Sam has caused him. Yeah, this is not something they did to each other. This yeah. is the pair yeah. of them mm-hmm. navigating the world. Yeah. As it were. Yeah. 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 Dreamer, yeah. you have questions. I do. I do. Um so yeah, I, I asked I asked Casey beforehand if these were okay to bring up because they're they're pretty heavy subjects. And I mean they're the figure <laughs> I'm not gonna ask that one. <laughs> no, is that did you highlight that one, Casey? Yes. <laughs> or is that yeah, that's Casey highlighting in the yes, it where I've yes, got it questions. Did. I think we've I think we've kind of covered that. <laughs> the the one of the questions I put in is I thought we were friends. Why did you do this to us? <laughs> but that was regarding, you know, getting into the whole the whole And I feel with. 
I feel like I very succinctly said I was doing it to be a bro. You seemed like <laughs> yeah, you wanted totally. to do this and you wanted a buddy to go along with you. Oh, so I was mate, being a buddy. Now I just feel even worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No, not worse. Oh, no, you can you can ask your heavy questions. Okay, you can ask yeah. your heavy questions. I'm prepared. I mean, well, I mean, this whole fig sense of home, it's it's about gender fluidity it's but it also it it I mean by the very nature of being about you know the queer experience and and being you know being a member of the the queer community um it would be a hard subject to to explore like on a good day but I mean you and you have had this experience of being trans was it hard to write about like was it hard to write the fic in general not all of it a lot Mm -hmm. of it was actually really soothing to write because i I was gonna ask that as well was was it hard was it easy because of because Mm. you do have that experience the personal experience so yeah that's that's interesting to hear that some of it could be good or easy um as well as yeah maybe hard so the writing writing from sam's perspective um the the argument was difficult that was hard mm. but everything before that that was easy to write because there was no condemnation from sam and it was so nice to write somebody just accepting that no questions asked like it didn't even need to be acknowledged it was just how it was and that was lovely to write. The argument was difficult to write, but also it was difficult to write, but it was also tempered by the fact that I got to make Sam feel fucking horrible and be in significant <laughs> pain. And I do yeah. really like that. <laughs> I do really enjoy that. And it equally that had the be benefits. Gratifying. It equally had the benefits that I didn't then have to go to Dean and be in his head for the consequences of those actions mm. i got to have mm. sam be awful and then beat him about the head until he was crying and sweaty and very very sore and then it was done you know <laughs> so <laughs> it was difficult to write but that was tempered what was difficult yeah. to write what was very difficult to write and I'm, I'm sure it comes as no surprise the bathroom scene was hard to write mm. the bathroom scene was hard to write because even though I had established with Dean and the reader is established by that point that no, he, he is not a trans woman and he does not, does not want to be a trans woman. And he's, he's perfectly happy with his male body assigned male at birth body. And, and, you know, he's, he's happy with that and he doesn't have a problem with it. It was difficult to write knowing how it feels to not be happy with your yeah. meat suit, mm. but be, utterly unable to change it because there is no right configuration mm. and i know that i know that i've discussed this with the pair of you and i've I've probably discussed it on the podcast as well i i identify as as trans mask which is different to being a trans man in that i desire a male body but i am not male i am not you know i'm not i'm not a man in the wrong body um which i know is quite an outdated term now but I, my gender identity and my physical presentation are different. Mm. So there is no gender of surgery that matches in my head anyway. Mm. And it yeah. is very, it's a difficult place to exist because it's, and I'm not, I'm not saying that being trans is easy because it fucking is not. Mm. But someone who is, who is binary trans, who wishes to trans, transition from male to female or vice versa there are steps that you can take to do that and there are there's lots of stops on the way but there there is a process that you can take and it's not easy but it is there and unfortunately it's not always accessible but like it's kind of like the the option is there to a greater or lesser degree and i i really don't want to minimize any trans person's experience because it's it's it, it's not easy it's not simple and i'm you know i'm massively simplifying it in a way that it isn't but there are options is i'll leave it at that there yeah, are I get what options. You're saying, yeah but for for somebody for somebody like me who my gender identity and 
my the way I want my physical body to be are not in line and mm. there is no physical representation of my gender identity. It's a very unique situation to be in. Mm. Um, yeah. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I mean, I, I opt to, I don't actively present as a woman, but I have not taken any kind of gender affirming surgery. So while I dress quite masculine, I, I inherently have a, a female body. It doesn't, you you end up kind of it doesn't matter what you do it's it's not quite right mm. you know so kind of being there in that moment with dean and having sam going but you're not you know a, a trans woman or a woman and dean going well i might as fucking well be you know i've shoved the other yeah. side down i can shove this side down and fuck it why not you know and i it was difficult to write that having been in that place it's very it's it's a difficult place to exist it's very disheartening because there is no it feels like there's no configuration that makes it feel right mm, that's yeah. difficult you know like i always used to say if i had a superpower it would be to communicate with people who cannot communicate with me so mm. uh babies toddlers and animals um i want to know what babies dream about <laughs> i want to know what do they dream about yeah. does my cat does my cat know that I love him to the ends of the earth and his soft little forehead is the cutest thing. And yeah. if he could please stop wiping his nose snot on my face, <laughs> I would really, really like that. <laughs> if he could just stop like smushing his soggy wet nose into my mouth, <laughs> that would be like my favorite thing ever. But mostly, oh. like mostly I want to know, does he know how much I love him? Mm. Yeah. But I would, ch- I would change that now. I would 100% have the superpower to shapeshift because then I could be, mm. I could present any which way I wanted and I could make yeah. it right in a way that modern science and medicine just cannot do. Mm. Yeah. And I could have the right head shape to have a shaved head and everybody could leave me alone. Because <laughs> <laughs> every time I go, I'm going to shave my hair off, all you fuckers go, no, don't do that. <laughs> um, no, excuse me. I what? have supported you every time you brought that up. <laughs> I said, yeah, do other it. people say I'm not allowed. Yeah, other people say yeah. I'm not allowed. Other people, other people are, are dumb. <laughs> yeah, other people. So, so rude. Don't shave your head off, Casey. So don't shave your hair off, Casey. But yeah, so yeah, don't some shave of your head off, Casey. That wouldn't be good. Yeah, either. please Those don't guys. shave your head off. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking no fun, these people. That one Casey, I can't support. Don't... No, no, no. Casey, That's don't shave happening. your head off. Casey, don't play in traffic. <laughs> Honestly, so rude. But no. Well, there were scenes that were difficult to write, especially the bathroom scene. For the most mm-hmm. part, it was actually quite soothing to write because I could acknowledge the world as it is and the experiences of a lot of people in the LGBTQ plus community. But it didn't ha- like I could make it better. I could yeah. make this soft, safe space, mm. and it didn't. It didn't stop the world being cruel, but it lessened the blow. You know, mm, so if, yeah. some, if somebody who lives is dealing with that can come and, you know, be Dean with Sam to comfort them or be Sam to support Dean, you know, I would like to think that that's helpful. So a yeah. lot of it was, it was nice to be able to go, nah, fuck you, not in my world. You can be mm. wanky over there on your own and I'm going to make this pretty little world over here and fuck you guys. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that for you and I love that about fan fiction. It's just, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Honestly, I think I think that answer covers all of the questions I had yeah. on that particular subject, yeah. yeah. I did I did also want to ask, um, if if you hadn't been, if this hadn't been pretty much a commission, were there things that you would have changed in in the fic? Because I know that some of my some of my personal requests or like preferences or or things that I that I wanted in the fic. Um I would have been less crying. Less <laughs> crying. I would have been less crying. Yes. That less was your crying. okay. That was that was your request. And I was like I don't, I, it's I don't in, it's it's, I... in, it's it's in my notes. It's in my notes. Hang on one second. Let, let me yeah, let me yeah, read no. the thing. What did I say what about say? The crying? No, it says Notes down Dacrophilia tag for this. You want a weepy Dean? I'll give you a weepy Dean, but Sam is going to get off hard on it. Because you were like, you'd said to me, you were like, 
Oh, maybe Dean cries more easily on his femme days. Like he tears up with witnesses and stuff, and Sam notices, and Dean's like sorry while trying to wipe his eyes, and Sam's just like accepting and ready. And like Sam has tissues on hand for when Dean gets like that. And it's like you were really, you really like leaned into this, you know, this right. emotional space for Dean, which I do really love. I do. But as I was writing it, I was like, oh fucking hell again. <laughs> Shit I feel which is I feel like the amount of crap like the 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 sh- <laughs> I feel like the number of times he cries is on you. <laughs> but I did well, encourage no. the crying. <laughs> no, it's it's not. It's not because then I'd that that was that was actually really gross like and misogynistic. I, said, <laughs> I, I feel like what I said did not imply that I needed him to cry like every three and a half seconds. <laughs> oh, and maybe Dean just cries more easily in general on his femme days. That is a direct quote from you because I took it from Facebook. Yeah. Nina Nina. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't yeah, get to no, go, maybe Dean Whatever. cries more often, but also you make him cry every three seconds. Okay, I want to say as well, what I just said about getting your shit together was grossly misogynistic and that is not like, like there's nothing unmasculine about crying yeah. or anything like yeah, that. Casey. You know, <laughs> yeah. Don't you start with me. Real men cry, <laughs> real women cry, real everybody in between and outside of the gender binary cry. Oh That's fine. Goodness. But also, by the time we got to the end of this fic and I was having to write Dean crying again, I was like, fucking seriously? Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's so but that funny. is that is that is because I am not. Um, things have to be quite drastic for me to cry, or I have to be watching mm. like you know those videos where like people come back from deployment and like they yes. meet their kids or their dog, and I'm like, ah. yeah, it's a very specific no, set of it. circumstances that make me cry. Um, and they are not the same as that, that, that make Dean the cry. Was- yeah, no, the crying was very self-indulgent because I am a crier. I will cry out the drop of a hat. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> fine. That's that's um, the only thing that I can think. I didn't... What about, like, um? because I think one of my things was that I didn't want... I didn't want Dean to wear, like, a whole lot of makeup, like, on Femme Days mm. or something. Or, or, or like... Yeah. When in the scene, the bathroom, the bathroom scene, I didn't want him to have, like, a huge amount of makeup um Mm -hmm. that's that's just a preference of mine um like did you was there anything like that like um clothing preferences no 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 I um it 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 may be it may be something that I explore further in in timestamps and and things like that about how how Dean chooses to dress once he has kind of accepted you know the 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 both sides of him but no as as you know, writing that the makeup scene, the, the bathroom scene when it comes to makeup was quite difficult because I was like, how do I strike this balance? Either yeah. he does really good makeup, which takes away from the fact that this is allegedly the first time he's done it, mm. and other, you know he must have been practicing at some point, or he does really bad makeup and it becomes a parody in of itself. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And so it was quite difficult to split the difference, but the only the only thing that. It, that I would have changed and you actually let me change it later down the line is I like guys in eyeliner. I like everybody in eyeliner. Everyone <laughs> should wear eyeliner. Not me. I don't yeah. have the energy to wear eyeliner, but you, you should wear eyeliner. Everybody should wear eyeliner. <laughs> um, I don't, I like, it. No, I don't like it. It's too complicated. <laughs> no, it's too complicated. I, might have... like, I mean, I love it. I love makeup on other people. Like if people are, want to do it, I think it looks amazing, but I, oh, fuck, I don't have the energy for that. <laughs> Yeah. All right. We're not going to wear eyeliner, but you should wear eyeliner. Everyone. On that subject, though, I remember, like, as you were writing, I I remember thinking, like, all of these preferences I had, they just got looser and looser. I was like, just write whatever you want. I don't even care. Like, change the pronouns, change the makeup, just do whatever. (laughs) I was just like, now is that write anything you wanted, basically? Was that because it was taking me so fucking long to write or was no, that because of no, the way the just, story was going and it didn't seem as yeah, important to be that I, rigid? Just my, my, yeah, my preferences just got less and less rigid. Like I was like, actually, you know what? Maybe I'd really like this if it was in mm. there. Like maybe I don't feel as strongly about this as I thought, you know? Yeah. But I, I found that with fan fiction in general is just, you know, I think the more you explore something, or the more you give something a chance, the more likely you are to actually 
enjoy it, you know. But, yeah, yeah no, I, 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 I enjoyed that about the fic as well. It's just like, oh, actually, you know, <laughs> give something a chance and it's, yeah, you, you're sort of, yeah, you, you, open, you open the world of possibilities. Yeah. I'd like to, I'd like to say like, I'm, I'm going to, you know, like (laughs) humble brag here. Maybe it was because when we started this, we had a very firm idea of, we were taking Dean from the show. Jensen is, you know, a very stereotypical masculine man. And that is, you know, that is clearly what makes him happy to present himself that way. And Dean is equally, although happy isn't maybe not a word I would use, but Dean is also a very, very aggressively masculine man of person i think it's just utilitarian so for dean uh, uh, you know like it's uh, just like yeah. being a hunter you know it's just like it's utility like it's just I ha- it's functional i've got to wear these things because yeah. this is the way you know my world works kind of a situation yeah yeah but by by the time we'd kind of got to the the bathroom scene certainly w- the the fic had established this much more fluid dean that wasn't so rigid and we could imagine him then going further with the makeup or you know mm-hmm. being open to female pronouns and you know he was less yeah maybe he was so. more more flexible more fluid in your mind by yeah. the time we got there i like i wouldn't like i said the everyone should wear eyeliner not me but you <laughs> <laughs> Ever, listen right i wear glasses if i could fucking put eyeliner on and be able to see and not end up looking like a panda i probably would i think it's real <laughs> hot on every look everybody mm. yeah um and you let you let me indulge that, um, which made me happy. I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't have gone any any further with the the the, the makeup or anything, and I I wouldn't have uh, like I wouldn't have wanted to put female pronouns in or or anything like that. Mm-hmm. The only thing that I'm thinking about it now is I might I, I might have played around with some nail varnish, but it just didn't oh, yeah. it just didn't enter my head at the time. Yeah, just didn't. That wasn't something I I brought up, was it? No, no, no. No, I didn't think so. Because I no, love nail polish, um, guys. And a lot... Yeah, I, nail polish and everybody. Again, not me, but yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, nail polish and everybody, um, apart from me. But you, you should wear nail polish. Everybody <laughs> should wear nail polish. It's beautiful. And if you don't want to wear nail polish, that's totally fine. But look after your fucking yeah. nails. Just keep them looking nice. Just nice and clean. That's all you got to do. Um, yeah. But yeah, I maybe would have... Um, I maybe would have spent spent some time with that, but... A lot of the things that maybe there's nothing that I wanted to explore that I didn't get to explore. And a lot of the things kind of ended up getting cut in that time jump that I can go back and play with now. I can go back and I can, I could have Dean try maybe more feminine clothes and see how he feels about it. And it's not going to have any bearing on the end of the fic because we only see it. No, true in a professional capacity as as a hunter and then we see him in an intimate moment with sam so Mm. you know does he prefer to wear women's cut um tops maybe but you know davis isn't going to see that he's not going to wear that to home depot because they're good they're his good clothes and he's going to home depot to buy some shit Mm. you know live in a shack he's going to wear shitty gross clothes because that's what you do when you're doing construction so mm-hmm. I can go and I can play with, you know, does he maybe like to wear different styles of underwear? Maybe. And you're not going to yeah. know that because by the time he gets in Sam's lap, he's naked. So we don't fucking know. <laughs> he might be naked. Yeah. He might still have boxes on, but irrelevant, irrelevant. <laughs> so anything I that saying, I, yeah. I, yeah, anything that I might have wanted to explore, I still have the space to explore. So For no, sure. apart from he would cry less. <laughs> um that's the only thing that well thank it, you for indulging me <laughs> yeah but the thing is we had like i'm looking i'm looking at the notes now and we were pretty much on the same page with a lot of a lot of it anyway there yeah. wasn't too many places that we deviated um you know like there's nothing that you said don't do this that i was like oh nuts i really wanted to do that mm. you know or there was nothing that i said I really want to do this. And you were like, no, I hate that. Yeah. So yeah, no, I don't think it would have changed. It really is. <laughs> we're pretty, we're, we're very pretty in on sync. A, on the same wave. Yeah. We're very, <laughs> very in sync. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's good. That's, that's, I mean, back to Sandra, I suppose with the, yeah. 
the main questions. Well, my only other question is talking about timestamps. Do you think you'll ever write anything from Dean's POV if you do go back into this? Oh, maybe. Maybe. Because that would be interesting, Ooh. I think. Um, and again, like, even if it's just, I don't know, like, a similar scene, you know, or something that has happened, but, you know, from Dean's POV or, like, oh, a, yeah. then a continuation of something that's maybe been cut. I don't know. I just thought, I, I don't know. When oh, you were Lord, talking now about I'm just imagining movie. the angst. But again, I like, say because my brain fucking hates me. My brain was like, "What if we wrote the bathroom scene from Dean's POV?" That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, what don't if we wrote the it, bathroom Casey. scene? Maybe well, you know, yeah. I like never it's say never. It's just an, yeah, it's just an idea. Don't think, don't think too much on it. I was just curious, like if something again, like some of this stuff after the end of the story might be from Dean's POV. I again, I was talking about verses, like talking about compos, like Chicago verse. This has a lot of that feel to me, like that I've just read recently oh. too. Um, just them, them Please having that, cry. having that sense of home and figuring themselves out together. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's very, it, it's, it's nice to see how everybody takes an idea and makes it their own. But then also, you just feel. I, I was saying this to you, Casey, before we started recording. Like, just my little thoughts, just to wrap up before we go into like the process and everything of it. But, like, yeah. I, I did kind of feel like once I was done with it, like sense of home could also be sense like S E N S E of home. Ah, oh, so and true. And I felt like you know in the beginning, it's like D, you know Sam is realizing that Dean is his home and like how these mm. things relate to him. But then he wants to make a home with Dean. Yeah. You yeah. know, towards the end of it. And I also my other um my other thought about just that I wanted to talk about was the case fic, how it was such a great sometimes supernatural tries so hard in a monster of the week episode to parallel the case fic with what's going on with the boys. And I thought you did that in a stellar way with the case fic. I loved how you weaved that in. You know, just like the roots and like all this, like all these things that you just kept bringing up. It was very, it paralleled it very Ooh. well with where they were at. So mm. I really thought that was great too. But Thank yeah, you. Dean POV, please at some Maybe. point. That'd be so cool. Yeah. Just something, yeah. just something. I just think it would be fun to see that um, at, at some point. And will you, There's- will you call this sense first now once you start adding? Cause you are going to eventually like, are you going to pop in the cut scenes? Cause I have not read them. I yeah. saw that they were at the end of the doc. Are they done pretty much? Like the certain scenes that you just cut there's out? There's a couple. There's like, I think there's like at least two chapters that mm-hmm. are done. Mm-hmm. And a third one that I was m- maybe like two thirds done with before I was like, I don't like where this is building. Mm. Um. So yeah, I w- would definitely be kind of like going back and looking over them. And they need, they, they, they're not ready to go yet because mm-hmm. they are, the journey of Sam and Dean becoming intimate on Dean's feminine mm. days. Right. So it's, it's, it's not complete. I couldn't, I couldn't post it and say, Oh, here's some timestamps. Cause it's not ready. Right. Um, but yeah, once I, <laughs> once I don't fucking hate this verse anymore, <laughs> right. I will, I will be going back, but I'm, I'm thinking about those cutscenes now and I'm thinking, you know what? I probably could change some of them around to be from Dean's point of view. And now the idea has, you know, tendrils in my brain of going, right, the bathroom scene from Dean's point of view, that won't be fucking horrible. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I but think we should do stuff from a like... different, yeah, a different spot too, though. That's always good. Like, to just just give them some happy, you know, yeah. but just from Dean's POV, I think would be nice. It would, just, like, it would just be a good thing. Um, I have, like, I have, like, ideas of... Um, like they were ideas to slot in whenever, but time became a factor for me. Mm-hmm. Mm. Sam's getting over a cold, so he's got tissues and he like gives tissues to Dean. Mm. Um, there's a because he's there's crying because <laughs> he's crying again. Um, there's a there's a scene early, it's in chapter one about Sam coming home from school, not like coming home early, but like getting home from school, mm-hmm. being sick. And Dean, like, you know, wrapping him up on a blanket and they fall asleep on the sofa. And the next day, Dean, like, you know, 
get like gets some NyQuil and he like makes muffins and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then Sam getting sick again as an adult and Dean's like, oh, I'll make you muffins and you know, robs a pharmacy of NyQuil and, and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. you know, like gifts and things that I would have liked Sam to have given Dean that just mm-hmm. I just ran out of time to slot them in. So there's plenty of there's plenty of stuff that could could go could be explored right i think that's great i think that's great with that that you found Mm -hmm. that you know you found this this other place that if you want to you can go back and you know either indulge or expand on my one it's a soft place yeah (laughs) i before we get into the thoughts Mm -hmm. about the process because but i i just keep thinking about this casey are you going to be totally like so irritated that you have to post the whole thing all at once and you can't do it in chapter by chapter (laughs) i just thought about that they already are yeah okay (laughs) okay okay that's what i was thinking i asked asked you i was like can i post this like every day every other day every week or do i have to post all the chapters at once and she was like no you have to post them all at once and i was like what (laughs) yeah no i'm not (laughs) oh So yeah, it's fine. It's thoughts fine. about thoughts about the process overall with um yeah. the Big Bang and stuff like check ins, deadlines, all the things. What 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 are your I'll, thoughts? I'll I'll go first because mine is longer and so is my process. <laughs> I'm sorry you said so many times. <laughs> uh, I actually um I found that I found the check ins kind of stressful to start with, mm. just because I don't uh, <laughs> I don't do well with deadlines. I don't do well with being. Like if you, it's not that I don't do well with deadlines. It's that I don't do well with being monitored, mm. Mm. Um, which is kind of a problem, you know, like in life. But like, if you <laughs> give me something to do and leave me alone to do it and say, I need this by X, I will get it to you by X. Just leave me alone. But if you say, mm. I need this by X and I'm going to come and check on you every fucking hour to see how you're doing, <laughs> then I become very stressed. That doesn't work yeah. great for me. So in but the beginning, clarify, the that's check-ins. Not, that's not, it wasn't an every, every hour check-in, just to clarify in case <laughs> no. anybody's really no, worried it's every, about it's this. Every, yeah. It's every month. It's right, every right, month. Right. And then there's, there's a period of time in the middle that you get like a couple of months after you've paired it with your artist. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so I think. I think August started, was like the first one. March. No, it's. It March is sign up and then there's May, June. And then it was August, right? I think that might have been it. August, and yeah. Then October. There was, no, there was a September check-in as well. There's a September check-in as well. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So yeah, no, they're not. They're not like up your ass, but like, yeah. No, I <laughs> I find that quite difficult. Just uh. leave me alone, and I'll come back to you when it's done. <laughs> but it turns out maybe I won't come back to you when it's done because maybe I needed those check-ins because mm. um yeah, yeah I finished it like maybe a week or so ago and like we were in October when I finished it. So, mm-hmm. you know. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, to be, to be fair with those things, um, blue fire 89, who has, who is the, I think the solo admin of this bang has been doing it for a long time. Mm-hmm. Maybe, I, I'm not sure mm-hmm. of their history exactly. Um, and I don't know if they've been involved in other bangs, but uh, no, I think, yeah, no, I won't. Say, I won't say what I think because I just don't know. Mm-hmm. But I think, but I do, I do believe they've been involved with other bangs for many years. So presumably they've got it down to mm. a fine art, <laughs> and they know that actually, yeah, these check ins are pretty necessary to keep people on track mm-hmm. and to you know keep yeah. the fire burning under their asses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah. it does. It does make it sense. Turns out doesn't work doesn't work it, it fully it fully makes sense and you know it's it's one of the things you agree to when you sign up for these things it just doesn't work mm. out great for me mm-hmm. but yeah. equally had i not had any of those check-ins i don't know that my brain wouldn't wouldn't have gone yeah nah, fuck it yeah you know yeah that's what i mean so i think having that helped you even though, even though even though you hated yeah. parts of it yeah <laughs> i think it does help you know that's the thing it just yeah. kind of helps you don't have to it. you don't have to enjoy everything that's necessary <laughs> to be productive <laughs> yeah it. yeah you just have to do yeah. it yeah yeah yeah, but uh, like other other than that, um, this this being my first bang, um, yeah, the, the admin blue fire, really helpful. The Discord really helpful. Um, you know, there was never, I w- I was never left confused about anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, it was really really nice nice experience. Good. I've got to say, ten Good. out of ten would bing bang big bang with blue fire again. <laughs> would bing bang. Would big bang, bang 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 bang
then we get into the question about cat thoughts about working with your artist, all of the, all of the yeah. things. So who's, who is your artist that you work yeah. with? Yeah. So my, my artist is male fantasy. Okay. Um, who, if they have a Tumblr presence, I have found <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I did find them on live journal. Okay. And their stuff is really beautiful. They do um so where Midnight Silver for You is kind of like drawing mm-hmm. scenes. Um, my artist does more sort of Photoshop digital art in, okay. in that way. Mm-hmm. Um and the stuff the stuff that they've done is is that I found on Live Journal is really beautiful. The stuff that they've given me for this this fic is absolutely fucking mind blowing. Mm-hmm. Really is. Mm-hmm. Um they have done a like a a header for each chapter and that is with the the scent of each chapter and some sort of like key like key points scenes mm-hmm. like stills from the from the mm-hmm. chapter as well that it all it, they blend together so beautifully really yeah. really beautifully um and i know at time at time of recording they had said they were working on a main header but they haven't finished it yet but okay. i imagine nice. it will be absolutely Lovely. beautiful as well yeah and that has been equally been a joy to, joy to work with them we were communicating by email and then we've moved over to discord now good and they have been an absolute joy to work with really lovely sort of taking taking direction from me but also coming back with a, a lot of their own really f- like phenomenal ideas and just kind of those bouncing bouncing back and forth of hey i'm thinking about doing this and me going okay well this is coming up and mm, mm-hmm. you know and they have been very 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 understanding when i have gone silent for weeks at a time and then been like i'm really sorry i don't have anything <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm fucking insane um but yeah super super experience working with them um That's great. And yeah 10 out of 10 also would big bang with that artist again male fantasy did um, you link will be in the description i'm sure when we talked about um like the 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 struggle you'd had with the first fic right when you were thinking that was going to be your big bang submission mm-hmm. when you switched over to this story did you feel immediately it would be easier for an artist to kind of pull things out of the story mm. If I if I had been paired with the same artist, I don't think it would have been as easy for them to pull out of what I was writing. Mm-hmm. It did not lend itself to their style of art as well mm-hmm. as what I have written, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but actually, when I, I settled on this one, I was kind of concerned because I was like, of all of the senses that I could have picked, I picked the one you can't fucking, like, you can't describe (laughs) visually it would only have been worse if i had done touches of home that's the only (laughs) way this could have been worse you know (sighs) so i was i was i was concerned about that um and you know uh, as i was getting picked last in gym gym class when the the claims went out that was worrying because that's mm-hmm. just inherently anxiety inducing and i'm gonna shut up now because i do <laughs> this, so i'm going to shut up no go on well no i got picked this I got is picked about quickly this is, yeah this is about exactly. you though. that's great this is about this your is about process and what happened. you went through yeah yeah so yeah I, I i was one of the first stories to be picked um which in was the first round we're both very proud of you mm-hmm. in the in the first round um sort of within within a couple of hours of the claims going live i got an email <laughs> that said like this is this is who you're with i love that and I was, yeah, no, I was, I was concerned for my artist because I was like, there's this real heavy focus on scent. And I imagine that's probably quite difficult to, you know, describe like, like visually in that manner, but they have just, it's been phenomenal. Mm. It's this, the stuff, the stuff that they've done. I can't, I can't wait to show it off. I cannot wait. Like, and I mean, when this episode comes no, out, it'll be there. That was no secret in like, because when you put the um, the summary out for the artist, yeah, um, I made it very in, clear that in, that was yeah, a focus. you put in all of all of that info and like you describe it for the perusal of all the artists that will be looking at these story mm-hmm. summaries and um, like the you know the author's 
write down, you know, the the summary and the tags and a brief, you know, some some points, some visual points of the story so that the artist can can look at these um summaries and say, well, yeah, that's that's, you know, that strikes me as something that could inspire me or they might immediately be inspired by it. Um so you mm. you you put those things in your summary. And male fantasy yeah. obviously saw that. They they liked your story, they liked your premise, and they thought, you know, I can I can work with this. So it's not it's not like you you lured someone in under false pretenses <laughs> and were like, No, here, no, I was... here is this horrible, here is this horrible thing that you cannot possibly make artwork out of. Good luck. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, I was, I was very upfront, and that was that that led to the surprise of of the story being claimed so quickly because I was like, wait, this is going to be a twat to draw for. Well, <laughs> I just remember. Didn't... No, I, I I remember telling you like when because I have I I used to really love drawing. I don't do it anymore, but as like my artistic side of it, I could I could see somebody just loving that idea of trying to represent, you know the sense and the mood with the sense like of each of those chapters so i the same thing yeah 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 so i think ingredients mm -hmm. you know yeah so i think that it it was i i I think you 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 packaged it in a way that made the most sense Mm -hmm. i'm using that word a lot but you know it it did (laughs) it it kind of it just it gave an artist oh this is whatever they would have chosen they they found it you know in in that Mm -hmm in that summary and in those things. So, yeah. Mm. And I think even realizing too, in the beginning that, no, this just isn't working for me. And then being courageous enough to be like, you know what? I just got to switch it up. I got to switch it up. I got to try something different. We're going to, we're going to go for it and do the thing. Yeah. So yeah, that was ballsy. Good job. job. Mm. Yeah. But it just, I wouldn't, if I had managed to get 10 K, I wouldn't suggest that to anybody. (laughs) (laughs) It just just wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have been good. My heart Mm. wasn't in it and I couldn't, so I mean, yeah. Yeah. like you, you know, you know, as a, and I'm sure there are, there are um, people out there that are, <laughs> have got all the creativity and write and draw, Chris. Um, <laughs> yes, you. Yes. Uh, you creator. know, awesome. like the things, the, the, the way, the way you craft a story as an author and the way you craft a story as an artist are very different and you're looking for different things and you're focusing on different things. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's one of the, the great things about working with an artist is, you know, they can pick up things that maybe you hadn't thought about, or you can, mm-hmm. they show you things and you go to like, but when I was writing that, I was writing it for an artist and it just was not authentic to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so you know, would it have been something that someone could have made really nice art out of? Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe. Mm-hmm. But I would not have been happy with it. Right. And I'm, you know, there are, there are things going on at the back end of this year that um, mean that I <laughs> I won't be going back to fan fiction for a little while. And also, I need a break, y'all. Mm-hmm. I'm sick mm-hmm. of looking at Google Docs. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but I I do intend to go back to that fic and and take another look at it and see if I can find where the story is when I'm not conscious of how my scenes are going to be interpreted mm-hmm. by yeah. an artist because I really like the fucking premise and I really mm. liked what I had. It mm-hmm. just wasn't yeah, just 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 wasn't working. Just yeah. Mm. Wasn't working. Yeah. And sometimes the timing's just wrong. Like you said, like Yeah. Sometimes it's just not the right story. time to write a particular yeah. story. Yeah. You have to yeah. let that you have to let that yeah. be. And it's, Especially the way the way that I write, which you know we've we've talked about it in great detail today, but also I'm just a scribe for so many of my stories. Mm. I don't, I can't, I find it very difficult to sit down and go this and then this and then this and like stick to that. Yeah, I try to just give myself places to hit, and however we get there is however we mm. get there. And sometimes when we get there, the next place is moved. So I just move. Yeah. With, it's 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 a very fluid process. I'm not as I don't know if it's discipline or not, but I'm not like Sandra who can sit down and go right this and then this and no, then this. No, but and see, I stays there. I don't think that that's true. Even for me, I just think you don't see it from maybe maybe not. My you know, angle, you kind you of know? you do 
You do. You dragon hauled it until you're like, it's because I, 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 <laughs> because I do the same thing that you do. I just don't. Yeah. Like there's, there's points that I know I want to hit, but if it decides it's got to go a different way to talk about something or to explore something, I'm open to doing that too. So it's, it's not this, yeah, no, it's, you have to be flexible as a writer with your characters and with plot and with everything. I mean, you've got to have an idea of where you're going or it does just get aimless, mm. you know, and there's yeah. it's just going to be like you said, just writing. There's nothing wrong with writing porn for porn's sake. And I think sometimes one shots <laughs> are just that ability to say, you know what, I'm not going to let my brain what if I'm just going to focus on this scene, this moment, this whatever, and just let it be. That's a yeah. discipline in and of itself that sometimes we do and sometimes we don't do. Um, but I think it's – it's And that's when we end up with self-inflicted word right. challenges that yeah. we go fucking never again, mate. But now, no. I, <laughs> but now I really like doing those. Like every once in a while, I like being able to write a short – just short story, just a short little book. Yeah. Book, 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 mm. book. That's it. It's done. Yeah. Am I doing that you're now? Next, you're next I, in my sight. I'm getting wash done. <laughs> I got to get wash fucking done. Um, and then oh, – God. I've got to try to get the Anyone? Rowena thingy done. So there's all these things that I have to get done so that I can move on to other things. <laughs> so many yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone who thought the wait of a year for Junkies was too long last year, I'm real fucking sorry because I posted Desperation Junkie in May and I haven't fucking looked at it. I haven't looked at the goddamn thing. I have no idea what happens next. And it's now October. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. I've got I mean, this three bag weeks. has consumed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This has been a I've lot. I've got three weeks left before stuff is going to start to happen in my life, in my creative life, that is not going to leave room for any kind of fanfic, never mind junkies. So it might be more than a year. I don't know. <laughs> I'm real sorry. I'm waiting, I'm waiting on them to tell me what happens next. Because when you try mm -hmm. and force it, mm -hmm. that's when I don't like it. Yeah. So mm. Sam or Dean, Junkie Sam or Junkies Dean will come and take a stroll into my head and be like this, and I'll be like, Yeah, yeah, right. You need that. to give. You need to actually. There needs to actually be some space in your life for them to have a moment to speak. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> that that fully yeah. that fully hasn't been for the last. Exactly. Yeah, I thought I would be able to do this and the Jackals vs Bingo, and I ended up only filling two Bingo squares. Um, which I'm which is more about. than zero. So mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. it is more than zero. Yeah. It is more than zero, but it's still mm -hmm. less than I wanted. But sometimes you have to think quality Very over sad. quantity. So sometimes that's how you have to think about that's things. Right. That's how I think about things to make it manageable. <laughs> quality <laughs> over quantity. So definitely you did that's the true. thing. You've tried the things, you've true. done the things, you've 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 completed the big bang. You know, we're I guess to round it out, um, as we start to get ready, because we've talked about it a little bit, would you do another big bang? Yeah. In the future, Some we keep saying no, um, but you said Sam no, Winchester. Sam Winchester, one would yeah. Okay, it nice. would have to be. It would. It would have to be. I like writing for prompts. I like writing for bingos, mm -hmm. and I was having a lot of fun with that. But then yeah. this was like this was loomy mm -hmm. and a problem, and turning out to be much larger than I anticipated it to be. Right, so. I would write for a Sam Winchester bang for the the joy of collaborating with an artist. Mm -hmm. But outside of doing a Sam Winchester bang to say I'd done one, mm -hmm. prob probably not mm -hmm. outside of that because it doesn't – I need a little bit more structure. Mm -hmm. So maybe a reverse bang I would probably consider doing mm. or – um, you know, something with a little bit more, and I don't mean stipulations like no Wincest or no Destiel. I don't, I don't mean that. I mean, like, right. give me, give me, you know, like a plot point that you want me to hit or give me a restriction or right. give me something like that. Give me a framework to work within. Don't just go have at it because I don't, I can do like that any time. Like a theme. That's yeah. why I a theme to work that, with. I, I think you and Dreamer work really well together because of that. Like, again, like this all came out of a prompt, a very, you know, and then, mm. like you said, mm -hmm. you, I feel like you, you say you don't want guidance or deadlines, but I feel like once you get a couple of them, then you're able to like expand and so, grow. So it's, it's, it's like, I want, I want a very clear brief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And once I have that, 
then just leave me be and I'll do it. Yeah. But I need I need mm. that initial brief to be mm-hmm. detailed, explicit, and clear. Yeah. And then yeah. I'm fine, you know? Yeah. And it so it's like I would do a Sam Winchester one to say I participated in a Sam Winchester by a big bang and I got like, you know, my artist had a good time, I had a good time, I've right. got to start from it. Right. But outside of that, there's not a great deal that I would get from a bang that I couldn't get just writing on my own with right. much less pressure. Yeah, mm-hmm. fair enough. You know, so I, sp- I suppose. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll answer like Sandra and say never say n- never. But outside of being involved with something regarding Sam Winchester, because there aren't enough things involving Sam Winchester, and I'm very mm-hmm. very very so about true. It. Mm-hmm. More Sam Winchester. If anybody's <laughs> writing or if anybody's planning to run or moderate a Sam or Jared bingo, hit a bitch up, please. <laughs> hit me up. I'll be up on that, like Jean Valjean on that fucking barricade for real, for real. <laughs> hit me up. But yeah, no, never say never. Mm-hmm. Never say never. But maybe more no than yes. But I think but sometimes we, we just always have to remind ourselves as why we were saying no to begin with, like once we're done. So I think the reality mm. of the situation sometimes in like sometimes distance from doing something kind of clouds your judgment. So mm. yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah. Some reminders of us, <laughs> yeah. you know, what was it like when we had to like, we were in the thick of it, you know, let's just remember. Yeah, exactly. That. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. just, just see. So yeah. See, that's the thing. I'd, I'd have to, I'd have to, I think, either have a really so it, it'd have to come with some framework or some guidance that I could work within mm-hmm. or I would have to have a really solid whip that I was just waiting to yeah. pull the trigger yeah. on. Yeah. I think so too. I think that just makes a lot mm. of sense too. Or even something like you said, if you've if you're yeah, working in something you've started and just kind of calls out to you like, oh, this is the thing that'll probably get me to finish it kind of a situation. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. I think I'd I do think I'd be drawn to a reverse bang, maybe more. Because okay. I think that's, yeah, that's cool that's kind of yeah. I think I'm I'm one of those people that gets paralyzed by choice a little bit. Dreamer, don't you say a mm. fucking word? Um, so if I have <laughs> if I have I can write anything I want, then I don't know what to write. Mm. But mm. if you say to me, write a story for this picture or this art, that's a bit easier for me. Gotcha. Yeah. I like I like to have a, a guide, something to start with that I can build on. Mm-hmm. Interesting. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this has been great. So we've That's got awesome. we've got two down. We've got one more mm-hmm. to go. <laughs> and we're <laughs> under time. We booked out oh till gosh. eight. And it is only half past seven. Do you have any like I don't know, any like final thoughts about anything in general that we talked about before we end the episode? And that could be to you or to Dreamer, like overall. It was it was this one wasn't supposed to be pawn, but it wasn't supposed to be this fucking big. Mm. I will say that. Okay. I will say that it wasn't. I mean, sorry, those thudding, and I'm trying to work out where it's coming from. <laughs> um. So that obviously leaves my <laughs> my my episode to be the last one. Mm-hmm. Um. I think we yeah. mentioned in in Sandra's episode that I am not done. I am at time of recording. At time of recording. <laughs> at time of recording. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, no. Um my posting date is officially the 31st of October, mm-hmm. which is what, 17, 18, 17, 18 days, depending on your time zone from now. Okay. Um <laughs> uh I'm how many words am I now? I'm at least 60,000 words in. Wow. Um, oh. Wow. Yeah. So uh, uh, I think at yeah, this I was, stage all I, was I thinking, can say is wish me luck, guys. Yeah. <laughs> you got this. I was thinking, yeah. actually, we said we'd start with Sandra because she finished earlier, but actually it's worked yeah. out we've gone in size order. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> that's what I was thinking yeah. uh, before we even started 
like yeah. organizing to record these episodes we should yeah go in size order and and, and it works <laughs> and, and it's like, gonna leave me kind of work out it's gonna work out in posting order too i mean sort of because well it is yeah Casey and i are going on the 26th and then yes. you're on the 31st so i think it yeah. i think it's kind of yeah. fitting that we recorded our episodes on the same day our fix are going to go <laughs> out on the same day that's and, true you know and then and then you're We're getting time besties. you're getting time to finish <laughs> You're getting time to finish up, and by the time your episode yes. comes out, it's going to have all been done, and we're going to get to reflect. I hope so, and do all the things. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been it's yeah. been great. I think getting getting the chance to really like talk about everybody's work, and we'll get a chance to do that with Dreamers. So nice, Dreamers yeah. soon. Yeah. So yeah, fingers it crossed. Wish like, me luck, everyone. Absolutely, you're almost. You got there. this. You're you got this. There. I. It's it's probably very narcissistic, but I do really enjoy talking about my work. <laughs> It's oh, just like, yeah, look, I, I think every author does. I think any yeah. creative person, well, I, I, obviously there will be exceptions because there's always an exception. But, yeah, I think we all just like talking about there are babies, right? Yeah, and especially. Every parent even, likes to yeah. talk about their baby. And the artists too, like, you know, getting a chance to kind of hype yeah. them up, you know, as to, as sure. to what they've been able to do. Oh, like, yeah. You know, it's it's. It's such an it's such an integral part of doing a big bang, mm-hmm. you know, is having that it's the collaboration. Whole point. Yeah, because yeah. any 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 author or artist can write or or do art mm-hmm. on their own, mm-hmm. but it's the collaboration that is the point of the big bang. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So it's been great. Mm-hmm. It's been great. We can't wait to hear Dreamers That's episode it. coming up soon. It's going to be uh, awesome. Yeah. Stay I tuned. Can't either. <laughs> a oh. <laughs> couple of a uh, couple of weeks i think after this one comes out that the next mm-hmm. one comes out so yeah. uh yes. stay tuned people and if That's you haven't it. read sense of home well you've had most of it spoiled mm. now but you should probably go read it because there's a lot that we missed out <laughs> yeah there's always something that somebody can pull out of fiction which is great mm-hmm. no matter how much we talk about it yeah everybody's experience yeah. read these fix guys they're so good yeah they are like, so good and read dreamers so as well good. Because it'll be out by the time this goes out, so read that mm-hmm. one. Yeah, mm-hmm. read it. Absolutely, you Stop might it. need some time. <laughs> I mean, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be seventy k by the time it's done. You'll need. Yeah, some a lot time. of it. A lot of it is text messages, though. <laughs> a lot of it is text messages. I read quite quickly. Yeah, let's go with that. Okay, we'll go with that. <laughs> we'll go with that. So we're gonna wrap up this episode. Thank you so much for listening, and let us know what you thought. Email Casey and Sandra at idlinginthempala at gmail.com. Comment on Spotify in the Q&A section or leave a YouTube comment. Join the Discord and chat with us and fellow idlers in real time or check out the merch store, which is another fun way to show your support. You can find details for everything on the website at idlinginthempala.com. Want to fuel our supernatural road trip? Consider joining us on Ko-fi for as little as a buck a month. We have perks to go along with different membership tiers and would love to have you along for the ride. Don't forget, you can always show your support for us for free by liking, commenting, subscribing on YouTube and following, rating, sharing on audio platforms. Engagement like that really helps us with the algorithms. All hail their benevolence. As always, we have the causes we support in the description. So you have LGBTQ plus talking charities from me, mental health charities from Sandra, and the main causes that we continue to be championing, highlighting, spotlighting, any other adjective that means drawing attention to are World Central Kitchen and Doctors Without Borders. Both of these charities are on the ground working in the Ukraine to help those still affected by Russia's unlawful invasion of the Ukraine and in Gaza, which is in the crossfire of the war between Israel and Hamas. This is not political. It does not matter which side of these issues you stand on. We are coming from a purely humanitarian view here. There are people in the Ukraine and Gaza that are trapped, cut off from basic human rights like food, water and shelter, and they are dying. They didn't ask for war and we want to help the people risking their lives to help them. If you cannot or do not want to donate financially, that is absolutely fine. Just sharing links around social media helps massively to keep these issues in the public eye and get people in need all the help that we can. So with that, we will say thank you for joining us in the back seat and we will see you next time, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.